The following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. All right, good morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Ninja Trader Live. My name is Jim Cagina, as you know, and it is uh, what is it? April 4th, 2024. Joining me live from Long Island, New York, the incomparable Tom Schneider, CMT. Tom, good morning. Good morning, Jim. How are you this fine morning? Uh, pretty good. Everybody, I have to apologize to everybody. We got lawn guys here. I'm uh, on remote site here in Chicago. Uh, so that background noise should go away in a couple minutes. We, we can't hear a thing. So kudos to uh, Mission Control for making that happen. Yeah, for sure. I got this uh, Yeti Blue Yeti uh, microphone, which is supposed to do stuff that's unique. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we had we had a lot of we had some stuff hit the street today, Tom. Already from an economic release point of view, um, should we get right to it? Yeah, why not? It sounds like a plan. Today's a busy day. It has been busy. We had the Challenger Gray job cut report. Job jobs cut. Uh, that comes out oh about once a month, and today was a little bit higher than last month. Ninety thousand jobs cut. Um, technology industry leading the way with fourteen thousand, uh, which is about a third of what it's been since uh, the beginning of the year. U.S. government was the top job cutter last month, accounting for thirty-six thousand announced layoffs. So hey, uh, hey Tom, also technology industry led some cuts too, right? Fourteen thousand two hundred twenty-two in March and 42,444 since the year began. So that's a little bit surprising. Right, exactly. So yeah, the technology industry led led the industries and the, the top job cutter was the government, which is the largest job cut since uh, September, 2011. So um, pretty, pretty substantial report there. Um, through the first three months of the year, companies have announced 257,000 layoffs which is down from last year's first quarter. So maybe that's good trending in the right direction on a seasonal basis. Yeah. The suggestion there is, you know, another indication of the job market continues to hold up in, in the face of these quote unquote, a high interest rates. Right. Right. And we got another report too. I think the big, big uh, weekly report we get is jobless claims, right? Thursday, eight 30 more uh, in the morning, New York time. We had 221,000 jobless claims last week, which was ticking up from what it's usually been around 210, 212,000 for for the last month or two. Um, forecast to be 214, so it wasn't wasn't unaware that it was ticking up slightly. Just jumped up a little bit more than than normal, but uh, continued jobless claims ticked. Uh, it was lower than forecast, and in fact ticked down from the previous week. So, uh, so, so Tom, Tom let me, yeah, let me ask you, do you think that the jobless claims being a little bit higher, 221 um, versus, you know, the four week moving average, which is closer to 200. Do you think that's a sign of things to come or you just think this is kind of like noise in the data? Uh, well, I think the jobless claims are different from the job cuts, right? So the job cuts are nearer, right? They happen more recently. Mm -hmm. Jobless claims uh, there might be a little bit of a delay, right? Because sometimes when you get a, a jobless claim, somebody gets uh, let go, they do have a payout from the company, right? So they still get a severance package. And so maybe those jobless claims come a little bit, or th those claims come a little bit later. So, 
you know, this is this could be cuts that happened a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, six months ago, if it's technology. So I think we'll start seeing that challenger gray job cuts uptick in the claims a little bit later. So I don't know if that's good or bad, but um, markets seem to like it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm just curious. It was just some one of these things. I'm like, all right, is this, are we trending? And now, now is this bad trend about to start? Right now is this part, you know, bad, you know, from 200 to 212, or is this just kind of ah, uh, it's a, it's not that big of a percentage. It's kind of a nothing burger. I, I think it's closer to that. Although I think if we start ticking up to, you know, the the high <clears> teens <throat> or the low two, you know, 220s, you know, that's a trend we don't want, right? Because it's additive. So we stay there a little bit longer, you know, over time that adds up. So um, we also yeah. we also had another report, International Trade and Goods and Services. The trade balance, U.S. trade balance was uh, negative almost 69 billion, which was forecast to be about negative 67 and a half billion. So a little bit more of a deficit uh, um, with money going out. I don't know what that means for trade, if that's good or bad. Maybe it means we're spending. I don't know. Yeah, I, this number fluctuates, Tom, every month. It's Sometimes it's a little bit higher. Sometimes it's a little bit lower. But um, this I, I, this doesn't help me when I'm thinking about my bias or my day, my, my, my day trade. Right. It's almost like an interesting note, but you're not you're not making any decisions on it. Yeah, and maybe we could ask Blue Putnam next time he's on. Should we be paying attention to this? How does it work? What does it mean? Um, you know, when you have a negative uh, trade balance, I think he's told us before that most of the, a, a lot of the big, uh, you know, I don't know, big eight or big five industrial company uh, uh, countries uh, should have a negative trade balance. Okay. Um, anyway, we've got some other news coming up. We've got uh, Philadelphia Fed Bank President Patrick Harker. It's Fed Blues all over again. Um, we've got Patrick Harker speaking at 10 a.m. We've got the weekly EIA natural gas report. We've got a couple of weekly bill auctions, four week and eight week. But then it really kind of kicks in with the speakers. We've got uh, Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin at 1215. We've got Austin Goolsby. He's from Chicago where you are. Uh, 1245 uh, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester at 2 p.m. We've got a couple of St. Louis Fed presidents speaking. One X, one newly newly appointed or newly um, in the role just this week. Uh, so the the X is uh, Kathleen O'Neill uh, Peace, and then uh, Alberto Musalem or Musalem. He's going to be speaking at 7:20. And a board, uh, somebody on the board of governors, Andrew and Adriana Kugler is speaking at seven thirty. So a lot happening with Fed speakers today. Yeah, Adriana Kugler is kind of new. She was appointed for that. There was that interim. There was that open spot for a long time. She was appointed in September two thousand twenty three. Uh, so uh, Adriana is uh, relatively new, but um, still, will she? She'll be speech worthy, Tom. You know the the other the other Fed ex Fed speaker that was on Bloomberg this morning. Uh, he is, is Dudley, right? He used to be the guy, the guy in charge of New York. Uh, he's, you know, I don't know what he does now, but he's a, a frequent speaker on Bloomberg. And um, Dudley made some interesting comments about, uh, about, about the, uh, uh, the neutral rate and the Fed funds rate. And he feels right now, remember before it was like, all right, the market was way off on its estimates of, of Fed, uh, Fed rate cuts versus the dot plot. He thinks it's the opposite now. He thinks the market is smarter than the actual dot plots right now. And he said that it seems like everything is reversed. He thinks that the R star neutral rate is probably high, higher. Um, he thinks that the Taylor rule is going to necessitate a terminal rate of 3.75 instead of anything lower. And so that was kind of really interesting this morning listening to him. Yeah, and it kind of goes with what what we've been hearing about, uh, you know, 2%. Maybe that isn't the, the that shouldn't be the target rate. Um, the Fed, pre the Fed speakers are saying that it'll take a little bit longer. In fact, I think I heard yesterday, one of them said it could be not until 2026 that we reach a 2% inflation. Um, I don't think they're saying, you know, they're, they're probably can't say what Dudley's saying, right? Which we agree, it's, it's, right. it should be higher, 
but yeah, that that's interesting. And, and, um, you know, I want, yeah, I wonder what Dudley's doing now, right? Some, uh, probably on some board or a couple of boards or doing some consultings, you know, maybe he's on a think tank. I, I never knew what oh, a think yeah. tank was time, but I, right. it sounds cool. I want to be in a think tank. Yeah. Yeah. You get to write papers the whole, the whole bit. Yeah. By the way, there was Bosnick who said uh, 2% target 2026. That's right. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. He seems, he seems like, yeah, we, we talked about that. He might be the uh, no rate cuts guy that we saw in the dot plot. Yeah. And Paul didn't really say anything yesterday. Crazy. Did he? Um, no. Well, there is one thing we want to talk about with either blue or Eric Norlin. Uh, maybe even Stephen Jonathan. One of the things uh, he said was the capacity of the economy moved up perhaps more than the output. Now, the question is, what the heck is the capacity of the economy versus the output? You would think the economy is the economy, right? Is it the potential versus the output? Well, who cares what the potential is? If we don't achieve that potential, that doesn't help us, right? So I'm just curious. Mike and I were talking about it. Maybe it's something we should ask Eric Norlin or Blue Putnam. All right. Yeah. Other than that, the quotes that I saw are kind of, I don't want to use the word weaselly, but yeah, there you go. That's a better word. Yeah. Uh, and Friday, we have another unemployment, right? There's, it's unenjoyment Friday. So the employment report's coming out uh, as well. And um, it could be a, a probably a bigger focus on that number Friday, which is tomorrow, than any, any, anything else. You know, it was funny because the, 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 the average estimate is about 213000 for uh, employment on Friday. And then Farrell was talking on TV this morning, again, on Bloomberg Surveillance, uh, suggesting that there was a, a, a whisper number. Actually, this wasn't Farrell. It was Mike McKee saying the whisper number is, is higher, 275000 What is a whisper number? Well, that's, that's the rumor, right? That's the, uh, the number that the, the, the analysts that might not contribute to that number, right? That's that's printed on Friday. They're the ones doing the research and saying, hey, this might not be, you know, could be good, could be bad, but this is what we think the real number is, the whisper number. Oh yeah, we, we talked about that when I was at Bloomberg. That was what we used actually when we would have our Friday, you know, unenjoyment pool every every month or so, right? Right, right, right. All righty then. Well, wow, a lot of a lot of stuff to think about going in today. Let's take a look at some uh, daily charts, Tom. Um, just by coincidence, I have the micro Nasdaq as my first daily chart here, and uh, sure enough, we broke out of the reverse megaphone or the wedge, uh, the wedge. <laughs> as we called it. Um, so let me kind of adjust this so everybody can see it pretty well. Um, yesterday, boom, big. I mean, this is today, right? Today, wow, blasting off. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of is keeping in line with what the market has been doing all year, a uh, little bit of a pullback and we haven't taken out those previous highs, right? That's our target. Um, but that's kind of what this market has done. It's gotten back to the, the last resistant le resistance level and then extended. Now, uh, how much it's extended has been different every time. But there's probably some sort of percentage that you could use to your advantage if you wanted to see, well, where might this go? By the way, guess the close on the E-mini S&P. We're watching that 415 number today, the settlement, to see if your guesses were correct. And uh, I, you know, I'm going to say that I know mine right now, if we ended today, I'd be probably the farthest one from the current current price. So. Right. But we have we do have some guesses in the 53s that might be pretty good close. So it'll be interesting to see. I, I also was wet. You know, this was this was a case time where um, this is this is this was my 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 I don't know if it was cognitive bias or what, but where I'm expecting this big retracement, a lot of retail traders expecting this big retracement because the bull market has been so strong. Right. right. You know, in many different markets. Right. And so, OK, it's going to be a natural retracement. We expect this and it hasn't happened. Right. We're right. just driving toward highs. Right. And we kind of I mean, I, I know I ignored everything we've been talking about with the support at the eight and the 21 and, you know, the low, uh, higher lows and all that good stuff that that says bull market. And uh, yeah, that that recency bias really, really um made shaped my my opinion my my guess and it was uh looking to be wrong now it could turn around but 
it's looking pretty strong today. Yeah, so just, just to wrap up the micro NASDAQ here, I just had my crosshairs at the start of the area of resistance up here, approximately 18,582. We talked about this area. It's been you know holding pretty, pretty for a long period of time since this turnaround doji here on the 21st. So it looks like we're driving toward that, but we got to break through it. We have a target with way at the top here, 707. E-mini S&P looks probably the same thing, right, Tom? Yeah, you know, we haven't hit the, the recent high, but trending in that direction pushed us up above the eight. So I think uh, maybe, a you know, a little more bullish. Maybe this this target is achievable. Um, could, could it be achieved today? For sure. Um, you know, we have, I think we've reached our average true range roughly. Uh, I could be wrong. Trying to look at the numbers. Yeah, we probably hit our average true range. So that doesn't mean anything. Average true range has been going down. Um, given some more information, uh, given some speakers today, it might elevate that market even higher. I don't know if we'll hit that target wick, but looking looking bullish today as well. And look at your look at your RSA crossing up, you know, crossing above its signal line. I don't use that too much, but it's trending up with price. So uh, a little bit of room to go to get to 70. So we have a little bit of an indication that there's a move, another piece of data suggesting there's a move afoot on the upside. But again, my hamburger bun is pretty solid here. We have top of the hamburger bun uh, area resistance up here around uh, 53.15. And that target wick that you just mentioned is, is you know not too far away from that. So we're definitely sideways bound. We're in that channel we talked about where for many months now we've been sideways, big break up, sideways, big break up, sideways, big break up. And this is the, fits the pattern. Yeah. All right, bullish, looking for places to buy. Let's shoot over the Russell 2000 really quickly here. Oopsie. By the way, Tom. Yes. Did I mention my Starbucks experience this morning? No, I, I missed it. No, I wasn't there. So, so my, my biological clock is off by an hour. Right. Right. So it's like, so I just, I set the alarm. Uh, I'm staying in this Airbnb in Old Park, Illinois. And there's a Starbucks about a half a mile. So I set, I set, it opens at six. Like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to, uh, it's six o'clock central time, which is five o'clock my time. So I'm going to set my alarm for five minutes to, I'm going to roll out of bed. I'm going to run, you know, I'm going to jog. I'm not running anywhere at my age. I'm jogging. I'm going to jog to Starbucks and it's not raining anymore. It's 34 degrees out. Uh, okay. So I get to the Starbucks first one in, I don't know if I was the first one in the girl behind there, everything's all set up. And I was like, hey, could I get a uh, vente coffee? She goes, no. I go, what do you mean, no? She goes, our coffee, we're out of, we're, we're, our coffee machine's broke. Oh. Like, but, but that's like, you're a Starbucks. It's your what do you business. Mean? It's broke. Yeah. Right. It's like going to a car dealer and saying, can I buy a car? No, we don't have any. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, she was quick on her feet and she said, I could make you an Americano though. And of course, I didn't know what an Americano was. I said, what's that? And she said, well, it's just like, it's just espresso and water. And it's kind of, it's pretty much the same thing. And I was like, done. So I have my Americano time. So anyway, I ran back. But <laughs> it was like, how, was it? how is it? Is it, is, is, she, was she right? Is it pretty much? Well, it's, I have it. It's, it's not much different. Okay. It's not, it's not much different. It's a little, it's just, yeah, the coffee's more concentrated, but then you dilute it with water. So it's, a, it's a wash in my opinion. Okay. Anyway, sorry for that sidetrack here. Russell, too. <laughs> I just had to get it out. I was just, that's my, you know, I'm, now I'm glad I told everybody who was listening. Uh, trend channel here in the Russell 2000. Again, we've uh, identified this a little bit different, right? We don't have that, that burst up sideways, burst up sideways. Here, it's kind of like, um, I don't know, a nicely sloping upward trend channel. Yeah, a little more, a little more wavy, but you know, I checks the same boxes as those two other markets we looked at. It cross above the the eight moving average, eight period moving average, within the trend channel. Not quite at the recent highs. Looking at a little bit of a, you know, maybe a resistance area before that, but um, in trending in the right direction. If you're bullish, and and today big bullish candle. Um, you know, I'm open-minded a little bit just because it's the Russell, but it, it looks bullish today. Yeah. And what guest did we have on that? Was, was it Jimmy yesterday? It was bullish to Russell 2000? I think it was Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was excited about it, actually, uh, which surprised me that he even mentioned it. But that was pretty interesting. Now, the RSI is also having that same start of that same crossover. Yeah, and, and it has a ways to go to get to overbought. So, you know, that that really doesn't mean we will get to overbought. Anything can happen, as we know. But it just gives me a little bit of, of um, potential for the you know, gives me a thought of potential for the Art Russell today. Yeah. So it looks like some systematic uh, behavior between the stock index futures. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for places to buy the Russell right now. Uh, the uh, Dow, let's look at the Dow. We have the M, the famous Jason uh, Mission Control M pattern up here. A little, um, yeah. little bit of a reversal pattern here, right? With that, um, I would call it a morning star. It's not a perfect morning star, but uh, almost an equal and opposite from the candle two bars ago being res yeah. uh, uh, held back by the A period. But yeah. again, very strong bull. Yeah, again, no wick at the top of this candle here so far this morning. Seemed to like the data that came out today. Seemed to like what all the Fed people are, are talking about. Um, so that's kind of the story for the stock index futures. Let's go over to gold. Gold finally has red, finally has a, has a little bit of a sell-off. I mean, this was like... Um, you know, the top's not in time, I don't think, right. but we do have a little tiny bit down six dollars and twenty cents. Yeah, so this looks looks like you know it could be toppy, could be maybe some reversal happening, but we still have a higher high and a higher low. So mm. we've seen it before. Three three days ago, we saw. A, a slightly red doji with a higher high and a higher low and the market kept you know continued to rise so you know I, i'd be interesting i'd be interested to see if it takes out yesterday's open that to me is kind of all right a little bit more worrisome but really yesterday's low is more important because if it takes out that that's a big reversal now i don't i don't know of anything that will move it down that much but um yeah, a little bit of a pullback might be a buying opportunity. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's a great point. So right now, my bias is bullish here on gold. We have a down day. We're going to look at the 10-minute chart, and it's going to look bearish on a 10-minute chart, is my guess, right? Yeah, yeah. And so now we have a conflict, right? But if there's an opportunity to go long on a, on a, day, on a day trade on a 10-minute chart or 5-minute chart or 3-minute chart or whatever, um, then that might be more compelling to do an intraday counter trend trade because you're going with the trend right is 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 badly worded as i just did that <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's keep moving here let's go to crude oil we have time right yeah we got plenty of time nothing but time on our hands all right bearish and golfing starting to merge after a turnaround og oh this is a really good good this is great i love this yeah, so a little more, I would say a little more signs of weakness here only because our low today is about where it was yesterday. Um, yeah, that is kind of a, a bearish engulfing. Um, but this could be this could be something else, right? This could be when you when you see gold and you see crude kind of behaving the same mm -hmm. way, you wonder if it's not just because they're dollar based instruments and something's happening in the dollar and that's where i might look at my market analyzer to see what are the currencies doing the currencies to me are kind of a good canary in the coal mine currencies today are up so maybe there's weakness in the dollar that could be i don't know i don't know what that would mean for crude or gold yeah, well, I mean, think about interest rates, I think, is part of the equation, right? Mike Burke was really articulate in talking about that the other day. Um, but you're right. The currency, the dollar, U.S. dollar is, is weaker against most of the currency pairs. You know, yen is a wash. Swissy is still having some trouble here. Uh, but again, you know, the Swiss set their, they're like Japan, right? They're at what, what, 1.75 is their Fed fund rate? Right. Or maybe 1.50. I can't remember now. It's been a couple, it's been a week. It's been a week since they changed it. So, um, yeah, so the dollar is definitely, is definitely weaker. Um, you know, treasuries are a little bit not, are finally starting to show some signs of life after a big three day breakdown here. We can talk about that as well, but the pattern on crude oil right now, we've had our inventory reports out for the week. 
OPEC plus is, you know, done OPEC plus stuff. And now we have this nice kind of breakout trend uh, trade on the way up. We have a turnaround doji, and then we have a bearish engulfing. My radar screen is up right now, even though the long-term trend is bullish and I should be looking for places to buy going into the 10 minute chart. I am going to have my radar screen up here because of these two candles. Good point. Good point. Um, there was the announcement that the U.S. will not be buying oil to refill the strategic petroleum reserve. So that could have, I mean, that, you know, I don't know how much they had planned to to purchase. I don't think that's a huge, um, from a from a number standpoint, it's a huge thing. But I think maybe messaging could have, have spooked the market a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, let's let's we might as well take a look at the ten-year note real fast. ZN, uh, remember we had that really big three-day break right here on the ten-year note. Let me move my market analyzer back out of the way. Working on one monitor today, Tom. We were talking about this, and boy, uh, are we spoiled when we have multiple monitors? Yeah, for sure. And and uh, ten-year note today, yesterday, even the day before. Buyers coming in to push this up. I think it's due to the messaging from the Fed, especially Powell, of uh, you know a little more certainty in what they're 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 doing. Even if it's um, you know the number of rate cuts, you know three, two, one, whatever it is. I think you know there's a little more certainty of where the interest rate will be. Yeah, and we tested the double bottom, right? We tested the double bottom uh, that we you know. This is the bottom we had on, uh, what is it, the 22nd of February. And, you know, this has been very cyclical. Nice rise up, a lot of hope, and then uh, a lot of despair, then a little hope, then a lot of despair. And then we kind of wick through that, you know, double bottom-ish area uh, down here. But these are big candle wicks and shadows at the bottom, Tom. What does that mean? This means that the buyers are pushing this back up. The buyers get interested, and all of a sudden... They're interested in bu in buying and push that market up. I, th I think it's just an area where that gets too cheap. Buyers come in, push it up. And we're seeing that again today. Yeah, so um, for sure. And this, this is looking like a little bit more of a bullish, a kind of a reversal pattern, maybe a little bit. We'll see. We got a long way to go before it gets to that old area resistance up here at the top at 10.28. Uh, but we will uh, keep our eye on this thing to see if this is a real turnaround. Or this is just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, the Fed's trying, so we'll cooperate a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at the time. Tom, let's take a really quick break and get back to the opening range. Okay. So you want to be a trader. Well, you should know you're not alone. Over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial market. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app with the power to customize how you trade on the go. You can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. All right, we are back, Ninja Trader Live. I'm, my name is Jim Cagney, and I am joined with Tom Schneider, CMT. We are entering the opening range. The bell's about to ring, and I have some 10-minute charts on the screen. Yeah, this is uh, kind of uh, anticipatory trading in the overnight. Europe Europe didn't really move the market too much, push it down a little bit. But I think that everybody was waiting for the 830 numbers. You look at that little bump. Uh, right up right before like seven o'clock push up to r1 and held its resistance came back down to yesterday's high and 
eight thirty was the was the deal breaker, right? That's where the market got a lift, and and where did it go to? It went to R two. So, you know, when we're thinking of if it if it's a good number, <clears throat> and it starts trending up, you have a target in those pivots. Yeah, and so I got to ask Tom. I mean, is this is this area, would this have been a good, after the number's been digested, now this is the tricky part, of course, but after the number's been digested, where, I'm just going to draw a rectangle right now, where, where would be a good place for a breakout trade on the upside? Now, if it was, a, if you put it, you know, right at the top, right above R1, right above that 630 to 640 candle, you run the risk of, you know, just Wait. having one of these whipsaws, right? Right. But if you waited for maybe the confirmation candle or at least a drive up to you know some other level that's important to you, then perhaps that breakout trade to the upside would have been, well, we know it would have been a good one now. Right. And, you know, the closer you are to that R1 level, the, like you said, the, the better chances you are if the, if, if the knee-jerk reaction is digested and then turns the other way, the closer you are to R1, that could have been disastrous. I would I would have probably done a breakout a um, couple minutes after the number, wherever the market was then. Okay, so you're using time-based. That makes sense too, because yeah. you're right. So we tested R1 and R1 held, right? After kind of, you know, some wishy-washy sideways trading all session, R1 holds, and then we kind of break back down, establishing a point of control, number hits the street, boom. R1 is no law. It's just forget about it. It didn't have a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And it took, you know, it took about a half hour to get up to R2, maybe a little more than that. So that was, you know, I think that's again, where pivots hold their value is mm -hmm. uh, um, you kind of have a guide. Now, of course, we're extending past it. Doesn't mean that R2 is, is where it goes and it holds and it turns around, but it helps you with the concept of, uh, I don't know if it's risk and reward or, you know, you have a sense of where the market might go. You could say, well, if I, if I put on a, you know, one lot, it makes this many handles. This is, this is my target. Is that worth it? Is that a trade that's worth it? You know, and, and you could say, well, maybe it's a two unit trade. Maybe it's a three unit trade. And you have a sense of what that would be worth, what the trade could be worth. Right, right, right. So our, but my all right. So, but with our our two in play now, would that possibly be a place for support? Oh, sure. And we might see a little bit of a retracement back down to test our two, just because it's an interesting level, right? Traders know about it. Um, that might be a good place to go long. Uh, interesting that we're at the opening range, the first candle of the you know first thirty minutes of regular trading hours. And we're not making a huge candle. We're not. We're not uh, advan continuing to advance. We're not uh, having a huge retracement. It's still early, right? It could could continue to kind of come back to earth a little bit, but um, it it's not like volume came in and and really the market. You know, the level of the market was determined. This might be where it's a good good price for everybody. So that's a great observation. So we're two minutes into the opening range. Right, you can see the volume histogram bar at the bottom of my my panel two. It's the biggest histogram bar so far today, and which is telling us volume is coming in right now in this first two minutes. But price action's been kind of subtle here. It's you know we don't have a huge range right now. Yeah, so maybe this is the level that that there's some price happiness. If if you pull your market, yeah. If you, so we do have a new uh, point of control, right? So. Yeah. You know, this to me, when you see competing points of control, you see two volume clusters, you know, it basically becomes old happiness, new happiness. And the new happiness is due to the numbers that came out at 830, not because we have new institutional uh, trading at 930. Yeah. And, and, and we just, we blew through these, these price points quickly and as a result, we didn't accumulate a lot of volume along the way. So this, vol this is a volume deficit creating a double distribution. We have the top distribution, which is contemporary happening right now, post-economic release. The bottom is what happened overnight. So it's, it's you know, a capital letter B 
uh, it looks like a capital letter B, if you use your imagination, called a double distribution. The paradigm on pricing has changed, right? It's yeah. shot up here right now. And this gray area here, or I don't know if it's brown or orange, Tom, but this is, this is, this is not price happiness. We didn't spend any time there. No, now, it could be later. We can fill this gap up later, but maybe not. So right now, my focus is from the top of that, uh, from the top of that uh, uh, shaded area to the uh, highs of the day. Yeah. Whew. Let's keep moving here. Let's By the way, Jim, yeah. I want to, yeah. I want to, let's do the special shout outs. Why don't we? Let's do it. You, go <laughs> ahead. You get, you got it. So first in the chat, we, we like to give special shout outs and today's no different. We have W Ray and Moisty D. I'm going to say W Ray is in the Ninja Trader chat. Moisty D is in the YouTube chat and you both get a special shout out and you two could join the chat at YouTube. If you have YouTube up, be sure to smash the like button. Jim likes when we say that. Smash it. Also subscribe if you'd like. Um, but you, I think you have to subscribe to see the chat. So maybe I'm I'm preaching to those who are already in there. Uh, you can also go to ninjatrader.com forward slash events and join the chat there. Um, either way, Mission Control is on it. They're sending your comments to us, your questions, your trade ideas. If you have them, please share. We'd love to see it. Yeah, and it's been a great, you know, we've gone through this journey together. Um, this community has been awesome. Everyone is here to help each other. We have a lot of new folks here that don't know anything about futures or, or, or maybe early on in their discovery process. We have a lot of experienced people here. So we really appreciate everybody kind of kind of coming together and helping each other out. That's, that, that's why the only reason me and Tom are here. So thank you guys for being here. All right, let's keep moving, man. Let's... Uh, Russell, I mean, let's go to the, the micro NASDAQ. It's going to look the same. Again, this is systematic price behavior, really. Same kind of thing here with the double distribution on the volume profile. Um, it's, it's almost like, Tom, data seems to be like in the sweet spot. You know, so it's almost like, is, is Chair Powell lucky or is Chair Powell good, right? <laughs> it's like this, or, or irrelevant, right? It's a total sweet spot. And it's just, it's every time we have a number that maybe isn't as good as it should, it could have been, we rally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the, the phrase we used a lot last year was good news is bad news. Bad news is good news. And we kind of got away with that thinking that rates are coming down and maybe we haven't looked at the yield curve inversion in a while. Maybe that's going back to normal. Like, you know, maybe things are getting back to normal. But I think when you have these reports that come out, it makes the market think, okay, these numbers, these job numbers, which they've been touting is pretty good. You know, unemployment's under 4%, kind of a, a, a bigger picture. They've been really good, right? But then you see these cracks coming in and the market says, hmm, maybe, maybe they're not going to cut, which... You know, as we talked to Larry Williams, what happens when interest rates are high? Market, market does well. So, you know, looking for higher interest rates isn't such a bad thing for the stock market. And maybe that's what this reaction is. Yeah. Well, maybe it'll be great till 2006. As Bostic says, that's when we'll get to 2%. <laughs> right. 2026. You're right. You're or 20, right. Uh, 2026. Yeah. Right. Um, the inversion actually got worse. Like the two-year yield right now, well, when I say worse, bigger. Uh, two years at 4.60, uh, the 10 years at th uh, 4.31. So that's about just by rounding about, I don't know, 29 basis points. Yesterday, it was around 26 basis points. So the separation got a little bit bigger. Right. But remember, we were talking about 100, 100 basis point separation at one point. So yeah. We've yeah. come a long way, right? Yeah. Let's shoot over to gold. Gold's down $9 now. Remember, it was down $6 when we started talking. So um, it's, uh, well, we're kind of, it's an interesting, this is a really nice pattern too, Tom. We have a really nice area of support down here for gold. And remember, our long-term bias is bullish. Yeah, that, 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 it's, that's an interesting, interesting chart. First of all, volume is increasing, right? So this isn't the regular open for gold. That's earlier in the morning. This is maybe a reaction to what's happening in the stock market, right? This is maybe maybe a, a switch from gold to risk on instruments, which would be the stock market. Yeah, and this volume coming in here seems, I don't know what your cumulative delta is showing, but 
Um, it seems like we have a lot of selling pressure right now going against this area support, which is approximately 20, uh, 2303 or four around, you know, in that, in that range right there. So we're testing it again. Yeah. Cumulative Delta has kind of been reflecting what price is doing. So big down move in this candle. Um, the, the, the cumulative Delta is going, ne it's getting more negative. So. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see if support holds or not. If it doesn't hold time now I'm thinking, It'll be a, this is the dilemma we were in when we started talking about this in the last segment. We have a bull market in gold. We have a bear intraday chart. We have a little mini retracement here to the pivot. The pivot's held on that retracement on the way up, the pivot point. And now we're trying to, now we're kind of trading between that and this area of support. And, you know, in my mind, it's like, all right, now instead of waiting for a retracement, you know, a, a, a drive up to get short. I'm thinking I'm going to look for places to get long in gold today. So I, I, I would agree, but a shorter term trade might be, I'm looking at this and it seems like the swing lows just get lower. Right. So yeah. we, we each, each successive peak low, or I guess peak is kind of trough low is lower. So this pullback that we're seeing now, if it, if it continues, Will it go through your your rectangle of support? I might look at a breakout try to the downside to get to your support. But that would be a shorter term. And we could talk about that at, after 10 o'clock. Okay, we will. But I just now, so I'm thinking the opposite now. And this happens sometimes. <laughs> we have different opinions. I'm thinking of a breakout trade on the upside. So I'm thinking we take out the pivot, right? And then I'd consider uh, entering a long, you know, long on a stop to see if we can get continuation uh, buying consistent with the daily trend. But um, alternatively, everything is kind of, there's a couple of markets that are rotating. So you're thinking the opposite. We'll get back to this at 10 o'clock time, but yeah. that's why I drew, I drew that ellipse right there thinking, wow, we take, we, you know, this pivot's held, this pivot's held pretty good after we broke through it, you know, earlier this morning, 7:30. but um, now another drive back up and a continuation buying past that uh, target wick here at 23104 that might trigger a breakout on the upside for me. Right, right. I see that. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm what I'm talking about. Sometimes let's go to let's go to let's go to crude oil. <laughs> let's go to crude oil. Uh, this one's a little more choppy, huh? Yeah, nice distribution though, right? A nice, yeah. nice volume profile. Um, you know, kind of three things I look for in a volume profile is a bell curve distribution, point of control right in the middle. And then kind of equal volume on the tails, right? On the out of value area, um, top and bottom. And, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but uh, in terms of the shape, but that's it's a pretty nice distribution. You're not exactly in the middle, but you're pretty close to it. Your tails on the, they look about to be the same amount of volume. So, you know, how does that help us? Well, if this is a range trading day, we have an, a, a natural pivot. When I say pivot, something to swing around, right? Something that pivots swings around. We could trade around this this pivot, uh, this point of control, um, but we also have one with the view app. So if those two things are lining up, to me, that's a, that's a nice, nice range bound trading thing. I do see a slight downtrend to this though. Successive lower highs, not quite successive lower lows. We did have that M pattern right around the middle of it around 630. But, you know, uh, it might be that we do swing around the pivot or, or this, the uh, VWAP and the point of control, but it doesn't maybe extend as far as we'd like to the upside. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. I am with you on that. So, I, you know, I love that observation that the VWAP is pretty close to that point of control, kind of going sideways right now. So, you know, again, buying the bottom of the value area, selling the top of the value area. I mean, that's a trade that, that worked nicely since 430 this morning. Um, eventually, maybe we'll break out, and, but that eventually might not be today. We don't know. Right. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Volume has kind of slowed down a little bit, though, a lot of it. If that's something. So, Tom, who else is here with us today? We have some great folks here in the, in the community joining us live today. Sure do. We have Cos P. We have Nick Earhart in Colorado. Nick, if this is your first time. Thanks for joining us. 
uh boston j is here yovan steven rios turtle simo Polly h d franklin raleigh r crawford anisa andrew morris is here for money chadro j man 2005 in las vegas nola boy is here rim waters rhyme waters uh, brandon n winner pd newbie s is here bow hunter ames theo g Reuven N, amity jones from south oregon welcome amity eric harrison is here as well avi hitta mike m thanks for coming to the chat and joining the conversation absolutely appreciate everybody being here uh that's awesome it is awesome yep. everybody's here today where do you want to go to next time any pro let's, let's check out let's check out copper and silver real quick that was a topic yesterday uh right. well, actually it's been a, a theme all week um you know dr copper was on the move we had a big breakout last couple of days on the upside today given a little bit back so far um but uh not really so what do you make of this okay uh volume profile not as you know kind of blocky right lower lower point of control that just it's almost a statistical thing, right? But it's also part of how it's calculated. These bands aren't really expanding too much. I mean, they just might have started to expand, although they don't look look very expansive, um, which generally, you know, signifies a a tighter trading range. Um, we've been up and down, above and below VWAP all day, so it looks pretty rangy. Yeah, no, for sure. I do notice this benchmark candle though, right here, seven twenty to seven thirty. You know, it's it was it's a pretty pretty large candle to be honest with you, um, but it kind of set the pace, and then uh, we never really recovered back into that particular candle, right? We maybe rallied back up to the piercing line or the continental divide, you know, we tr but we couldn't close above it really. It's approximately right. where my crosshairs is. And then we kept going down and now we're trading below VWAP right now. So um, today, right now, um, I'm feeling like even though, and again, this is a conundrum, right? Because the daily charge telling us be bullish, um, but maybe this is going to be a little bit of a natural retracement day down. And look where that point of control is. It looks like it's support, you know, in a support resistance area, right? It was support yeah. for so long. Now, of course, the point of control is dynamic, just happens to fall where it falls. But, you know, <clears throat> this might be a case where the point of control doesn't act as a pivot. We'll see. Yeah, so um, it's looking good, though. It's looking good. We'll see how that goes. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's check out silver, too, though, Tom. Silver is a market we don't really talk about much. And there are smaller contract sizes here on silver. So keep, keep that in mind because silver is a big, big contract. Uh, from a uh, tick for, you know, do a, a dollar for dollar, dollar point of view. So to make sure you have the right risk reward ratio, depending on what flavor of silver you're trading right now. But again, we're having this little bit of a retracement back down today, Tom, um, even though we had a breakout the last couple of days on a daily chart. Um, a bullish engulfing candle right now, popping back up toward VWAP, but we lost VWAP in the rearview mirror really early today. Right. And, and since, I don't know what time was that since about six this morning, we've been trapped between the first and standard deviation, second standard deviation bands, um, which is interesting because I don't think it'll sustain. It could, but if it, you know, this is one where if it breaks out on the upside, maybe you target VWAP for a shorter trade. Yeah. I mean, this is a, uh, it's, I love, I love the fact that you said trapped between the bands. Yeah. There's some kind of trademark there, Tom for us. <laughs> The <laughs> market is is tightly bound by bands. I, I don't know. Yep, yep. But I you know, don't. it's look it's looking it's looking bearish for sure. So any type of long trade right now would be a counter counter contra trend trade counter trend trade. But you know, VWAP held when it was tested at four a.m. You know, mm -hmm. regular trading hours opened, and the institutional traders look bearish so i don't know i i if i'm if i'm yeah. looking for a counter trend trade it's just to view app yeah yeah i mean in, in another strategy that's worked pretty much since 640 
selling off the, uh, off the first standard deviation band, selling off the first standard deviation band, selling off the first standard deviation band, selling off the first standard standard deviation band. And I know my experience as a, a commodity broker for all those years, that's a strategy that people do employ. Yeah. But then you have to be careful of that eventual breakout to the VWAP because, you know, that's another possibility. And then all of a sudden, okay, um, I'm done with that trade idea because <laughs> we're not bound by the bands anymore. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Anyway, you know, Jim, uh, yeah. one, one thing that um, you were talking to Jimmy yesterday about, you know, copper which is a useful metal right it's uh something we don't hold necessarily for intrinsic value it's something that's it's uh reflects yeah. what's happening in the economy um versus gold which is is more of a, a traditional inflation hedge so to speak but when we see commodities rising like copper like even silver and, and gold to me that's that's not inflation in the rear view that's possible inflation ahead of us, mm. right? Commodities kind of lead that inflation cycle. So when we see crude and copper trending up and, you know, forget about cocoa, right? Cocoa is a supply demand thing, right? Corn yeah. might be a supply demand thing. Although I would lump it in maybe with, with copper and silver. It's I tend to get a little worried when we see these markets elevated because it is kind of a... a, a canary in the coal mine maybe for inflation yeah 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 i mean all of this stuff goes into everything we consume right so the manufacturers have to buy you know in raw ingredients or inputs or whatever to make the product that we want and then all of that stuff is cost more money coming in to the to the factory and it's going to cost more money coming out so prices might be affected is what you're saying yeah, well, I was just trying to summarize what your point, which was a good one. And I don't know how good I was at summarizing it. No, 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 that's good. That's good. You know, I didn't wake up this morning. It's like, all right, I'm going to use the word factory today in the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it sounded like the word to use. Yeah, no, that's good. Oh, my goodness. Let's shoot over to the Euro FX real quick just to see what's going on there. That is 6E on my market analyzer. Remember, symbols here, symbolism is a little different. Um, in the futures market uh, for currencies in particular than it is in the over-the-counter market. In futures markets, the CME has a six in front of the currency pair. So this a six in an initial, which usually is obvious, J for yen, Japanese yen, C for Canadian dollar, A for Australia. So um, just to point that out, if for those of you who haven't traded a, 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 a futures currency pair before. And we don't know where, and I think you were talking to Craig Buick and, and, you know, where did that terminology come from? Why six? You know, I don't know. If anybody knows, feel free to drop it in the chat because it stumped us and it stumped Craig Buick at the CME. Yeah. I, I, I yeah, I guess a good point. I don't know. And, and they've currency futures have been around a long, long time. Um, I know where the Z comes from in the treasuries, but I don't <laughs> right. know where the six comes from. So where does the Z come from? I know, but, but. So the Z, from? so back in the day, and uh, you know, I was around back in the day, um, you know, the, the treasury bond symbol was, as an example, was US for US bonds, right? That was, that was one of the symbols that was used for the 30-year treasury bonds. And then they decided, then, then they opened up a cheaper membership for folks to trade treasury, to the treasuries in the evening, in an evening session. And they called it the night bonds, right? And um, it was, you know, it was the same contract, but it was a different session. So they had a different symbol. Right. And so they decided since it was the night bonds, they were being funny and they put a Z in front, right? Catching Zs instead of catching Zs, we're, we're trading bonds at night. So that's how right. that Z came in front of the treasuries uh, back in the day. And, that, and it stuck and it became an electronic market. I love that. That's a great, great explanation. Yeah, but the six, I don't know. And I think the micros might be sevens actually. So, but it's, I don't know how that came about, but we'll, one of these days we'll figure it out. If anybody would know this is Eric Norland. He knows everything. So maybe we'll get him to, we'll get him involved in this research project. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, Eman S&P retracing really nicely here. Uh, that R2 did not hold. I drew that rectangle here, folks, just to kind of highlight that. Um, we closed below it ever so slightly, um, close below it ever so slightly. We're entering this volume, 
uh, desert or no man's land here. We're, we're entering it right now, uh, just south of the 37.5 retracement. Um, and, uh, well, the, the nice retracement happening. VWAP is also conspicuous. So if I were looking at a trade, 10 o'clock hour, and if the market's still kind of sticking around here, I might take a five unit micro e mini trade, break out to the <clears throat> downside, look at taking a couple off at VWAP, and then maybe R1, that area where there was a little more price happiness. That's what I would I would think could happen. So hang on a second. You're saying go short here five units. Right. Where the where the where that volume desert is. Right. And then take it take a few off, off the table at VWAP. So buy right. a few back. Yeah, let the last two ride down to R one. Yeah, maybe even lower to that competing point of control, and that's okay. the beauty of multiples, right? You could do one there, and one at one at R one, and one at that point, or have a runner, right? Yeah. Well, uh, all right, I'm not that courageous. Okay, I hear, I hear you. I just this. This does seem like a strong rally up. This does seem like a, a normal retracement. We're at thirty seven point five right now. Um, my inclination, I would do something a little different. I would wait. I would try to do a five unit trade. I would try to get long um, at a couple different places at the thirty seven five, at the fifty, at the sixty two point five, and then I'd end up with an average price somewhere in the middle for a resumption uh, back up to R two or higher. But I'm not ready to do that until 10 o'clock. But that's just what my thought process is. So so here's my reasoning. Yeah. The institutions came in and could not advance. That's my reasoning. Ah. So, but I've been wrong before. Yeah. And I'm a, my, all right. So let's let's just let's just do point counterpoint. Yes. Volume is pretty low overall 312,000 so far we're halfway we're almost done with the, with the opening range so it's okay the volume is okay but it's not huge it's not 400 plus it's not 500 plus it's not anything like that so i think the institutional uh, participation in general is a little less than normal and yeah. when it's a little less than normal it's for it's us folks trading and the algos trading and you know th there's also going to be uh some institutional trading for sure so I hear you on that. And the ratio between the micro NASDAQ and the e mini SP is pretty tight. So that's our argument in your favor. So hmm. I don't know. We'll see. We'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah, we will, we will come back. By the anyway, way, least, yeah. Pip, Chick, Pip Chick and Chris C are here. Oh, all right. Like that. Chris C, I think you know who Chris C is. Maybe. I don't know. Cause he's, you know, we have the, the, uh, our, our family, uh, 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 uh stuff we're dealing with um today um with um services for uh, one of our family members who's passed and he's he might be on an airplane coming here so oh, I, my see. Brother, I see he might not be i'm not sure what the, if he's coming today or tomorrow um i know all the cagnanas across the globe are converging on chicago right now so uh, <laughs> well it's like like locusts we'll come in we'll right. swoop in and we'll go back uh, oh boy speaking of locusts yeah. April 8th is the total eclipse, right? Mm. Next Monday. What I heard was it's also one of those 17 year events where the locusts come out. Do you remember those as a kid? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like once. Yeah. yeah we lived in Northbrook, Illinois when that happened. And it didn't happen for another like 17 years. Yeah. Cicadas. Yeah. Well, locusts, cicadas, same thing. They, they taste the same. <laughs> No, they are cicadas. And it's funny uh, you should mention that because I have this dog that just like a vacuum cleaner. It's like, oh, they're like snicker bars for the dogs and the cats. So now we're being told uh, this is a 200 year event, not 17. Two, wow. two different broods of uh, at the same time coming out. So their cycles are overlapping. Wow. I I'm, I'm not even that old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't experienced any locusts in South Carolina yet. So I have, I've done it here in, in, um, uh, in River Oak Park River Forest in Chicago. And I remember one year um, there were so many 
that um, when I looked over the forest preserve, I live close to a forest preserve, and you could see the birds just flying, Going these masses of birds right. chowing down on right. these flying snicker bars. Oh, boy. Thanks for that anyway. mission control for the for the information. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the two hundred year event with the two different broods of uh, what is it locusts, cicadas, whatever they are. That's kind of more. Uh, that's rarer than a total eclipse coming over us, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So interesting factoids. You learn more at, at Ninja Trader Live than just trading facts. You right. you know you you we get we have we have ecology. We have you name it. We have it going on. Yeah, when we talk, you know, we talk about, you know, be careful, you know, this, this report, that report. Uh, I think Monday, it's in real life. Be careful with the total yeah. eclipse and the, all the bugs coming out. And don't eat yeah. the bugs. I was kidding. Don't eat the bugs. Don't, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, let's just shoot over real quick time. I just want to look at micro Bitcoin. You know, we're kind of, and this has been kind of sideways, right? We're less than at 70,000 level, but we're holding our own at 67,835 right now. Got a lot of volatility, a lot of big price moves here. I got the micro Bitcoin up, right? Which gives us the ability to do multiple contracts and participate a little bit more reasonably uh, than the big contract. Um, but, you know, we broke through VWAP here early in the morning, volume weighted average price, three, three o'clock this morning, the European open. And then we went kind of sideways and we're, we're off to the races right now. So this is a pretty strong rally in, um, in the Bitcoin futures. Yeah, and a little bit of a lift, lift at the stock market open big volume coming in and you know i'm i'm open-minded but you know this thing can really really move so upside is possible yeah all right well, let's take a really quick break and uh, we'll get right back to it so you want to be a trader well you should know you're not alone over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial market. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app with the power to customize how you trade on the go. You can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. All right, we are back, folks, with uh, Lindsay Schneider live, Jim Cagnina, and Tom Schneider. Appreciate everybody being here today. Opening range is officially over, right? So now we're entering that period after the opening range, right? That first 30 minutes of the open of the New York Stock Exchange is over. And uh, markets sometimes kind of move differently when that happens. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, I want to explore our, our idea about the E-mini S&P because I still think it's in play, right? <laughs> our, our thoughts are still in play um, as far as is this is this gap in the volume? Is it a make it or break it, right? My contention is if the market starts trading down there, it's just going to shoot on down back to where there was price happiness or close to it. Jim is thinking a retracement trade is, is possible. Go long. So... Um, are we still in that conviction, Jim? Not, not much has changed, but do you, you know, are we still looking that way? Well, I, and from my point of view, um, from my point of view, my, I haven't changed my mind. Um, okay. uh, but I'm open-minded. I'm willing to try it, try whatever you want. Remember folks, we're trading on a real time, uh, simulated live account right now. And, you know, we'll do a lessons learned after this. this that's the point. We're talking through our trade ideas. We're thinking about what to do. We're trying to articulate that to each other and everybody else. And so don't, don't follow blindly 
whatever we do here, right? Just, just you know, it's just really experimental. We're really kind of, you know, coming up with the lessons learned. And then over time, hopefully we have enough, you know, we write down our trades, we come up with our muscle memory and we develop a, a long-term strategy that we stick with. But Tom, I, you know, I can go your way. I can do, I can get, I can get short uh, five, five, I'll do it in the, I'll do it in the, uh, the big, the big, uh, I, I will do it in the big, I just don't want to tar toggle to the micros right now. Sure. It's going to sure. look the same and be the same. So it doesn't matter. But so where are you thinking? Well, You're thinking, well, let's do this. Let's do this because, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about it, I still see lower highs, right? Yeah. Now your, your argument about volume, I don't know which way that goes, right? Because we've said in the low volume day, still there, are, there could be some pretty big moves. I, I, maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll use the target of 50% retracement and we'll go okay. long, right? We'll okay. go long there. All right. How many units? Let's do two units. Okay. So, and at least we're consistent with the intraday trend and the interday trend, right? We're consistent with both of those by trying to find a place to go long in my mind. Going short, I realize, I agree with you. There's always these retracements. There's always these reversions to areas of interest. I get that for sure. But then we're talking counter trend trade and I am not good at that. Right, right. Anyway. I, I right, hear so that. I hear that. So we trade down to that 50% retracement level. Okay. We take two. Where are we wrong, right? Where can we let that trade breathe to? You have a you have a red <laughs> dotted line right at like fifty two ninety or so. We might be we're wrong often, Tom. So we might already be wrong, but <laughs> right, right. I don't know why that line is there, Tom. This is this is a legacy line from some other some other era. Yeah, maybe I from a, from a from a daily chart, right? That kind of filtered through. I don't know, but I'm going to delete it. That doesn't ring a bell okay so um yeah for me the areas of interest are the 62.5 percent vwap for sure but but we're but we're, we want to test the vwap to get our position and then 62.5 is kind of important bottom of the value area which is approximately uh 5284 is kind of important and then you got the next vwap band right south of that as well as well as previous sessions highs. So there's all sorts of areas of interest where we know there's orders. We know people are putting orders at these places, right? Traders are putting orders in these places. So we have to pick our, we have to pick our, our areas uh, importantly. Now, if you put it all the way down, Tom, past the bot to the bottom of the value area, we're saying this volume deficit is going to be filled in, or at least a little bit, right? It's going to be filled in all the way through it. So does that make sense to go that far or does it make sense to say, all right, once we, we, once we chew up some of this volume deficit, that should be enough for resumption. Yeah, I, I think, I don't think now, we need to go that far. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add some more uh, interesting factoids here. I'm going to put a little bit of area of resistance that we saw. This was pre-market high, pre-market right. high, right where I drew my rectangle, right? And it held. And we know a lot of times support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. So this arguably would be another area of interest where we could say, all right, we get to that rectangle, we're out, you know, if it, if it kind of tests it and breaks through it. I kind of like the idea of the 62 and a half retracement level because it's right near that price happiness area. I agree. Little, I think if it, uh, if it starts yeah. to travel south yeah. of that, it's going to fill that volume and get to that bigger cluster which i think is too much i think that's too much risk okay so this is approximately where my crosshairs is right now is approximately a three handle or a three point uh risk it's about 150 dollars a contract we have two contracts on multiplicative math means it's a 300 dollars risk approximately where my crosshairs is so i would say which isn't a huge amount but it's depending on your account size so it's a reasonable amount. So I would be a little bit lower just so in case we get a wick below that 62.5. I don't sure. want to get wicked out, Tom. Right. I I agree. That's good. You're still within that volume cluster. Um, yeah, that's that's good. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Now it's got to be two. I'm going to use, and by the way, folks, we have coming up today, not the next segment, because we have a great next segment with Tom and Anthony Cordelli and Tracy Shuchart, 
but the one after that, I'm going to be uh, focusing on um, how to use the chart trader, how to place trades to the chart. It's really convenient. It's really easy to set up, and there's a lot of power to it. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later today. So anyway, I just I went ahead and put it in there, Tom. So now we got to wait. Now we're in wait mode. Yep. Now, the other thing that's going through my mind is how long do we wait? You know, what's our expectation here in terms of duration? Now, do we want to keep these orders in all day? Do we want to keep these orders in for a half an hour um, before it's too late, right? And so when I'm thinking about breaking up my day, I have a pre-market segment, I have an opening range segment, and then I have after the opening range segment, which goes to, I don't know, closer to lunchtime. So I, I have about at least another hour, hour and a half before that period of time is over. And so what I want to think about is, when do I abandon the trade idea? This is more of a swing trade. We're being patient. We're waiting. Um, but what, you know, how long do I want to go? Right. And, and, you know, one of the things is the longer you go, the dynamics of trading has shifted, right? So if we were just to let it go for about a half hour, maybe you see some successive, you know, downward moving candles and you get your fill. Great. But if, if you wait an hour and a half and you still haven't made it, you might have seen a rally and then a fall and that fall might have momentum with it. So the dynamics have changed and that that long look that you want to take that long order might not be the same one that we see now, even though it's the same price, right? The dynamics might have changed. The momentum might have changed. The VWAP might have changed. Yeah, right? yeah. And, 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 and you see different price behaviors in different segments, right? So, you know, if you analyze your trades over time and say, hey, how many successful trades did I have versus unsuccessful trades pre-market? How many did I have during the opening range? How many did I have between opening range and lunch? How many did I have at the close? Once you start analyzing that data, you will have an aha moment. And, and that aha moment will, be, will, will release itself in a way that, okay, I'm really good. I'm, I'm better. I'm better at pre-market than I am at the close. Or I'm better at the close than I am at pre-market. Or I always want to wait for that one o'clock move and then I'm better. Once you do go through that, and you could do that with the SIM account with NinjaTrader, once you, you will be amazed at the pattern that you see when you write it down versus trying to memorize it. Yep. <sighs> this is looking pretty strong right here, Tom. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like waiting. It's like a spring coiling up right now, ready to do something spectacular. Volume's pretty low here. Volume overall so far, folks, is a very low volume day so far. 354,000 contracts in the front month of the E-mini S&P, which is June 2024. Euro, uh, the micro NASDAQ, 408,000 small volume day as well. Um, but everything's green on the board, Tom. We got uh, even Russell. Let's take a peek at the Russell. So looking very similar, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Big move up at 8.30. It actually <clears throat> got to R2, forming a point of control right now. So maybe there is price happiness. The market just likes this area. Um, opening range really didn't advance too much, right? The advancement all happened. You know, it's interesting. That advancement happened on very low volume comparatively, right? That 8.30 dominant candle you look down at the volume chart, go to the left, go to oh, the big over here. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 yeah. Look at yeah, the yeah. volume that happened there. It's like nothing, right? Yeah. But then look at all the volume at the opening range and it really didn't advance, right? It, it tested R2, but it came back down. So that to me is kind of a, uh, I don't know, a statement that this level that we're at right now could be price happiness for the day. Yeah, that's, you know, I, that's a great observation that, you know, you're looking at volume, um, boom, opening range kicks in. You don't have the same behavior as you had on a lower volume pre-open segment. And um, what does that tell you? The, that the institutional folks or, or the active traders or the open on uh, the folks that are putting position, you know, opening positions on, on the open um, have decided, it, you, you know, are more neutral perhaps than right. everybody else was before that. Yeah, That's wonder, a, that is a compelling argument for going short, Tom. That's a very compelling argument for going short. 
Right. And I think that was kind of my argument in the E-mini, although it's more pronounced here, which is volume comes in and can't move this market up. And it's more pronounced, certainly, in the Russell. Yeah. You're not sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I like I this is this is a new argument to me. Yeah. I like it. And I'm thinking. Okay. Which you, you know, <laughs> it takes me longer than normal person. <laughs> uh, um yeah, uh cumulative delta kind of reflects what's happening. It had a little bit of a pullback at the opening range, but then that big big reversal green candle that almost got back up to R2 that brought cum that brought cumulative cumulative delta into the you know more positive role so kind of flat now not you know not really interesting this russell today so i guess you know thinking about a breakout trade on the downside now you got me thinking about this tom <laughs> this is <laughs> you got me thinking about a breakout trade to the downside right now and um I, i'm seeing this gray area that i highlighted here this rough volume deficit area right here and as you pointed out in a previous uh, show, that a lot of times once you get into that gray area, it just goes. This yeah. velocity takes over, um, which would be an argument for a, uh, a breakout trade on the downside. And let's just explain how that would work for everybody. So we start entering into that gray area right there, and you would use a stop loss to enter, I know it's not intuitive because usually stop loss, the word stop loss implies you already have a position and you're putting in, you're stopping your loss. But in this case, we would enter, we could, it would be a sell stop. You would enter the market on the short side, right? With, with that kind of, and it'll behave like a market order. And then once that's triggered, the idea would be, well, hopefully we're through this area of, uh, you know, we, we start chewing up all of this uh this this gray or uh, i don't know what is it brown how does it look on your screen brown it's beige i think it's i would call it beige beige all right we choose through this, Maybe this you know yeah and you know we we drive through pivot we i'm sorry we drive through view up we drive to r1 which is a destination just like that non <laughs> non for non blood song destinations Hope, hope, is it hope of a destination? I can't remember the letters. I don't remember that one. But, um, you know, the bottom of that that beige area, that volume desert, it comes <laughs> right at the, the bottom of it comes right at the top of, you know, it kind of forms a natural resistance area, right? Because there is no right. volume. So, you know, you're looking at, what is it? 2106 and, and change is maybe a target. Um, yeah, and that's what I put. That's where I put that. I just threw. I just threw an order in right at the right at that pivot. And right. It was you know it's twenty. It's it's uh, twenty one ten seven. Right. 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 So I'm with you, man. I, so this is counterintuitive to what we just said on the last on the last one, but remember on the daily chart looks a little different on the on the Russell. Right. It's kind of gently sloping up, but with those big volatility bars. Right. And the volume is different here, right? Yeah. That's what's different as well. All right. So we have two put trade ideas percolating right now. I don't know whether or not we'll get filled or not, but these are a couple uh, trade ideas. We're perc now, I would hold this one longer than the S&P, right? I'm thinking at the, in the S&P, you know, in 15 minutes or so, if we're not filled, then I'm going to abandon the trade. In this particular uh, uh, trade idea, I would hold it for longer because, because um, if, if we don't, there's a higher probability in a bull market that we're not going to get filled anyway, but if we do get filled, then I could see downward pressure, at, you know, becoming momentum. Right. I don't know. That's what I got. <sighs> Boy. So let's just kind of talk a little bit more detail. What's coming up next. We do have, um, um, well, this is Thursday, right? We have a, we, we're not done yet. Right. We're <laughs> nowhere a, near done. This is good. Uh, develop I, yeah. your edge, develop your edge is coming up at 10 30 with Anthony Crudelity, special, special guest today, special guest, uh, shy girl from Twitter, Tracy Shutart will be joining Anthony talking about commodities. So we're going to do a little focus on, uh, uh, more, more on commodities today. And Anthony will be talking with Tracy. So that'll be fun. And then 
uh, the next segment after that will be Jim, you have a platforms unleashed segment, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about trading from the charts, how to set it up, how to get the most out of it, how to use it. Um, and uh, we'll go into detail, take questions and answers and all that stuff. So that, that'll be pretty good. Um, but then after that, we also have, this is a special guest day. We have Ed Jerkin coming in from Ninja Trader also to join Mike Burke at the wrap up. And Ed's going to give us some uh, Ninja tips on how to navigate through once you have an account open or if you're thinking about opening an account, how to navigate through the uh, setting it up uh, in the portal. So that'll be pretty good. Remember when we we opened up the new website like a year ago? March, it was, it was like March of 2023. Yeah. Where was that then? I needed help. I needed help <laughs> navigating. We were now, we, we now had to log into the, the website and all these new bells and whistles. Uh, but Ed, Ed, you're in good hands with Ed. That'll be a, a good show. Yeah. You set loss limits and all sorts of stuff, you know, self-imposed, you know, <laughs> risk, uh, risk management. It's, that's all pretty good stuff. Tom, we're getting close to getting filled in. I know. Come I on. see that. A little bit more, a little bit more before the segment ends. <laughs> oh, my goodness. In any event, can, any, yeah. let, let's take a look at gold. I want to see what gold looks like. All right, let's go to gold. I mean, it was looking kind of like stock index futures, right? It was, uh, oh, you know, I'm, I might be thinking of something else. Uh, looking like uh, we, we hit that target area that we were talking oh. about, right? Tom, we needed an alert, right? Right, <laughs> so that, but this was my trade idea. Remember, it was like, hey, when we get into this area here, I want to see a breakout trade to the upside. And so far that's cooperating, right? This area, as soon as we took out this high right here, all of a sudden I'm interested. As soon as we took out this high wick here at 23, 10, 30, I'm interested because we had a lot of, this support was, was, was strong, man. We wick through it, wick through it, wick through it, wick through it. Couldn't close below this, in, into this rectangle. Really strong support. And then boom, finally, we took out this high. We took out this high and there we have it. I mean, it's, it's off to the races. I, Man, I, I feel bad we didn't uh, execute that. Yeah, but that's what happens, right? We got distracted on our other trade and we were focusing on different markets. That happens. Yeah, yeah, well, that's a good point. So it's kind of hard to follow every single market with one, mi I have one monitor going right now, <laughs> so it makes it even harder. Um, but even in general, right, it's hard to master seven different markets, right? It's hard to get that muscle memory going in the time frame you're interested in trading when you're talking about seven, eight, nine markets, right? So that's why I'm, you know, if you're, day, this is for day traders. If you're swing trading or position trading or creating a portfolio, that might be a little different because you have more time. But when you're day trading and you're looking for the breakouts and you're looking for support and resistance and you, you know, you're literally looking for a, a really quick in and out, then it's usually better to focus, at least this is my experience time, better to focus on two or three markets, get good at them, muscle memory, Get your strategy going and then just be patient. Right. How about this, oh, Jim, for an idea? Yeah. You're at an Airbnb, you're at an Airbnb, right? Yeah, I am. And you're on your laptop. Yeah. What if the Airbnb had a setup where you could had a docking station with multiple monitors? Yeah. Would that would you pay more for that, right? Would you would you request that? Would that were a special special feature of your Airbnb. When you travel, you need multiple monitors, right? You can't just I, I, live off your laptop. Absolutely. I would pay more for that right. for sure. Right. It's like, so when I, when I'm looking around for an Airbnb, it's like, all right, I want to, I want to ask about the, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Is it, is it, is it high speed or is it the regular, you know, bundled package you get with, you know, <laughs> when you get it, you know, they'll sell you a bag of peanuts also if you get the bundle. So right. I want to get, I want to get the good stuff. So um, yeah, no, for sure. For me personally, but now then again, you know, if you run an Airbnb, how many traders do you think are going to show up? Well, they don't have to be traders, right? They could be yeah. people in, in software development or whatnot, but you know, it's kind of like Uber has different levels of service. Why not Airbnb? Maybe they do. I've never used an Airbnb, Jim. No, you're, you're lying to me, right? That's not I, right. I've been Seriously? to a bad traditional bed and breakfast, you know, on my honeymoon through Ireland every day, get a new bed and breakfast, but Airbnb didn't exist back then. And I have not used it since then. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm happy for you or embarrassed for you. I don't know which one, but 
no, it's, you know, it's you most, usually it's a good experience for me. I usually have a good experience for me. And, you know, you, you have to pick your, your places, right? Are you there for business? Are you there for pleasure? You're looking for two different things, right? right? Two different things. So right. unfortunately I'm here for neither, but we're still working. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. So I heard an order filled somewhere, Tom. Where do you think we got filled at? Let's look at the E-mini. Could be the right. Russell. Who knows? Let's go ES first. ES is not quite filled yet. So let's go over to the Russell. That must have been it. I heard that little noise. And sure enough, we're in the, we're, we're in the desert, Tom. Right. And we're in, we're in view app holding a support. <clears throat> looking for R1. Now I have to throw a stop loss stop. in right yeah. away. Always, folks, always get a stop loss in, even if it's a catastrophic one, even if you're not sure exactly where it should go, just get one in right away. And then you can kind of, you know, adjust it a little bit once you get that fill. But here we have that drive down to VWAP time. We're in the desert right now. This low volume node right here uh, in this uh, beige rectangle that I drew up here. Target right now is still at R1 time. You still happy with that? Yeah. Uh, for the, for the, you know, why I say it like that is, you know, I see this big, big volume desert, but um, it's a little more conservative, right? Um, and for the time that we have remaining, I'd, I'd like to see it, it achieve. Now, it probably won't hit before we go to our next segment. But um, yeah, I'm happy with our one. You they have little faith. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll hit it. I, I, I'm thinking I think we should maybe let it run or get down to the lower area. But I think in the interest of getting uh, you know, our target, let's, let's leave it there. I'm, I'm hopeful. So let's, let's explore that a little bit, right? Uh, so you mentioned let it run, right? Let it, so there's two different, you know, we have one unit on. We're only we have one contract short, right? And so one trading strategy would be in the let it run type of idea would be, all right, this target's too tight, right? So we want to let it run. We want it to be lower. We want to bring that target, that profit target lower. Uh, in my mind, if, if, we, if, that, if I was going to employ that strategy, then once we made some progress into the trade on the, on the positive side, then I would probably want to move my stop to break even. Yeah. So those are two different strategies, folks. And, you know, a lot of people use the second strategy um, on a really quick basis to get in out really quickly here. So, but what we've done here, and again, we could adjust the stop loss to make it more reasonable. But what we've done here is say, hey, this is our, this is our homework. We've done our homework. This is our strategy. We're going to be patient. We're not going to be moving things around. Um, in my experience time, when I moved, when I moved targets around and I moved stops around, uh, I was usually right the first time and wrong the second time. Right. Right. So I don't know. It's just, it's part of the FOMO, right? It's part of the, the emotional aspect of day trading where you're going to you, you things aren't happening as quickly as you want them to happen, or things are a little bit different than you expected. And you start freaking out and you start changing things. So, <laughs> well, and, and that's why you have to be, you know, you have to be okay with the fact that this, you have two, two exits, right? You have one that is in your favor and one that's not so much in your favor. Sometimes it's, you know, a lot of times it's against your favor, right? Yeah. You just have to be okay with that. Right, right. So right now, what my the last thing I want to leave with this trade idea here is if this bar closes similar to where it's at right now, um, I'm looking, I just, my stop's at the point of control right now. And one thing to consider, and uh, uh, I learned a little bit of this from Griffin among, with, among other places, is we have that high, the high of the contemporary candle. Once this candle is printed on the screen, it's done, it's over, no one can take it away from us. Um, then I, I would move my stop closer to the top of that candle, right? I want to see a series of lower highs and I would expect another lower high. Therefore, I'd feel comfortable with that stop being a little bit higher than that wick. Yeah, for sure. So, but anyway, right now we're kind of like stuck in the mud. Let's, let's take a look at our E-mini trade. All right, we'll go to the E-mini trade and then uh, we're, we're or, getting close to this. trade. Yeah. Wow. How close do we get? 
this is another thing you guys are going to, you know, if you're brand new to trading, you, you, no matter any, anything you're trading, you're going to have this experience, right? You get, you, we, we established, we wanted to get long at 93.75, right? We're trying to exploit the VWAP and uh, the 50% uh, harmonic retracement that we had. And, you know, sure enough, this contemporary wick, where do we go? We, we missed it by two ticks. Now, if I was reckless, I would chase it. I would just move that target up, but I'm not reckless. I'm the opposite. I'm like risk adverse. You should see me drive time now that I'm 60. <laughs> it's I'm not making breaking any speed records. <laughs> yeah, I but went anyway. From, I went from a race car driver to uh to not recently. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good. But you know, one thing you can do, Jim, is um with the Ninja Trader software is you can right click on that VWAP. One thing I might do because we we do respect the VWAP a little bit, we might attach it, right? And you've got two, you know, you, you added one. Yeah, on, I broke so. it up into two. You could attach it to, you could attach it that order to the VWAP. VWAP. So it'll change as you go, right? right? But in this, like we talked about though, Tom, right now I'm going to abandon this trade idea. Um, yep. I, you know, I, it's, uh, my time is up. It's 1030, I think, is it? Yeah, it's uh, 1030 East Coast time. It, it didn't do what we did. We didn't get it. I'm not going to cry about it. There's going to be another opportunity later on. So I'm just going to abandon it and say, and then we'll check again later at another time frame in the day. I'm not comfortable leaving this here after this, after this big shadow at, at this, you know, now we're not closed yet. We still have a lot of time left, but really only 28 seconds left. So I'm going to cancel that. For sure. And, um, you know, don't want to have it hanging during uh, our next segment. Our next segment coming up is, uh, yeah. develop your edge with Anthony uh, and, Crudelli. And, yeah. And, and uh, I'll be honest, Tom, it's like Christmas for me. It's yeah. like Christmas today because not because of Anthony. And, you know, we get Anthony all the time, right? We're kind of sick of Anthony. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. We love Anthony. But we have Tracy Shoot Chart here, which, yeah. you know, is, is going to be awesome. I follow her on Twitter. She's, she's very, very smart, a very, very awesome uh, analyst, no matter how you slice it. So I can't I wait to hear this next segment. Let's go ahead and take a really quick break and get you guys going. Awesome. Thanks. So, you want to be a trader. Well, you should know you're not alone. Over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial market. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app. With the power to customize how you trade on the go, you can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Technical analysis made easy. A starting place for new traders. When do I place my trade? Where do I set my stop loss or profit target? All good questions that traders need to answer on a regular basis. One of the ways traders get to those answers is by using technical analysis in a historical price chart. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit NinjaTrader.com to get started today. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app. With the power to customize how you trade on the go, you can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. 
Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit ninjatrader.com to get started today. Good morning and welcome back to the Ninja Trader live, uh, live stream. We have Develop Your Edge with Anthony Crudelli, uh, today's special guest, um, but we'll bring on Anthony. How you doing, Anthony? Tommy, I'm doing good. It's great to have Shy Girl here with us to talk commodities. I don't think I could talk commodities without her because <laughs> we're going to do the macro backdrop. I'm going to look at the charts. I think it's, uh, it's a tag team uh, made for the show today. Yeah, I'm excited, Tracy. Welcome to the show. This is your first time on Ninja Trader Live, and uh, I've followed you on X, X Twitter for a while now, so I'm really excited to have you on. Well, thank you. It's nice to be here. And so, um, Anthony, I'm just going to hand it over. All right. Well, Shai, you and I have done this before a little bit uh, in the past, <laughs> just a couple of times. So I wanted to bring you on to develop your edge today because... Right now, everybody's talking about the macro side of things when it comes to what's happening in the environment. Everyone's always talking about the macro side of things, but it's really getting emphasized a lot about what's happening with rates uh, and the dollar and then how gold and copper and a lot of commodities are just often running to the upside. And it's kind of a unique time, Shy, where you have rates actually going up and you have gold going up, silver going up. And I think that I, I'd like to just start there and just maybe have you talk a little bit about why you think we're seeing this. Well, you know, I think that, you know, gold and silver both have kind of been neglected for a very long time. And back in 2022, what we really saw when they started raising rates is we saw crude actually being used as sort of an inflation hedge. And what we've seen this year is you know, we've started to see a little bit of uptick, uptick in inflation for, you know, the last four, three, four months already. And so I think that's part of the reason. And I think that's part of the reason that you're seeing the dollar up as well as the precious metals up, because most people are used to that being somewhat one to one correlation. But, you know, that doesn't always hold true when there are other fundamental macro backdrop indicators involved because I've seen a lot of people ask or a lot of people have asked me that why is the dollar going up and we have precious metals going up you know I think it's part that it's an inflation hedge and I think that you know I think there was also a marked difference when we had that 180 turn with the Fed with Powell in that December meeting when all year he had been saying you know higher for longer higher for longer higher for longer and we saw that pivot in the messaging in that December meeting where they started talking about rate cuts. And that's when the market went berserk and factored in six rate cuts, which has now come back down to about two and a half. Um, but, you know, that's really when we saw an uptick in gold too. And so maybe gold sipping out, you know, if they're telling us the economy is great, the economy is great, the economy is great, well then, why are you tapering QT? Why are you talking about cutting rates? And so gold and, you know, silver might be sniffing that out a little bit as well. Yeah, it's a unique time because, I mean, gold, when you're looking at the U.S. Uh, futures markets, you know, it's gold and dollars, right? And so how often are you going to have rates going up with the dollar going up and then you have gold going up? I mean, it's not something we've seen historically, at least in my career, where I've seen something really it's a, uh, Instead of the opposite correlation we're used to, it's actually co correlating with it, which I think is 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 so unique. And what I want to do is I want to maybe just we'll start with gold. We'll pull up the charts because we're going to talk gold and silver today. 
you know, for me, I always look at range uh, expansion. I look at, is it range contraction? Is it mean reversion? And right now, when I look at gold, we see uh, range expansion. I mean, I look at my Bollinger Bands here. We have a daily chart up here on Ninja. And I'm curious, Shai, I know that you look at the technicals as well. And uh, and, and maybe we touch base a little bit on the te te technicals alongside with what's happening in macro. Gold to me looks like it's not ready to slow down. It looks like it's going to continue to go higher. And what should be we what should we be watching going forward? Maybe some technical areas, but also some of the data points that you think could either fuel this fire a little bit more, or possibly maybe take some uh, people out of the gold market if we see some data points that might suggest maybe this trade is done. Well, I think that I think actually. And many may disagree with me, but I actually think that if they actually do cut rates, that's going to rocket ship gold higher. And I know it doesn't make sense, but I think the markets are going to be worried. Why are you cutting? Again, why are you cutting rates if everything is so great? I think that worries the market. I think the gold market is telling us that right now. And so I do think that could go higher. So far, I mean, from the, you know, the recent... You know, FIB extension, we just blew through the 161.8 FIB extension, blew through it, right? Yeah. And so to me, that says that, you know, this still, you know, this still can go a lot higher. I mean, we don't have the, um, you know, it's very high up there, but the 261.8 is up at 2457. Now, I'm not sure it actually gets that high, but... You know, the way that it's blowing through all these FIB extensions without looking back says to me there's a lot of momentum in, in this market. In addition, you have to remember this, when we started seeing gold start to really move, the market was very short. The market's always short gold, right? <laughs> so um, I think a lot of that initial boost was... Um, shorts kind of getting squeezed out of the markets. And now if you look at uh, CTAs versus gold, they're on the chase, right? Because they're chasing these, you know, the Momo CTA traders are chasing this higher. And so um, right now, I, I just don't see, you know, I, I don't see reason for it to really stop. <laughs> this very moment. And I'm not saying it's going up in a straight line. Obviously, no, exactly. nothing goes in a straight line. Um, but we really don't, I don't see a major catalyst here for um, it to put a halt to this trade immediately. Now, that can always change. Data always changes. You know, unforeseen circumstances always change. But, you know, and we also have geopolitical risk going on right now um with Ukraine and you know Israel and Iran and I think gold markets are also sniffing that out as well and so we've got a lot of things a lot of fundamental factors behind this trade uh as well as you know if you just look at price action it's you know it's not stopping anytime soon <laughs> No, as I mentioned, I, I always look at three different types of environments. And right now we're in range expansion. Anytime I see a top Bollinger Band on a daily, this is a 20 period, three standard deviation, take out the previous Bollinger Band peak and we have a higher high and we're hugging a measly five day moving average with no rotation. It's a market you don't want to fade. And this is why I like going to you to see what's happening in the macro backdrop. You know, as today we're focusing on the commodities markets, you know, specifically talking about gold right now. And to say that there's not a lot of headwinds for gold. I mean, I totally agree because you have a Fed that's talking dovish. They may not cut rates, but if they do cut rates, what you're saying is that this may accelerate it. You also have the geopolitical headwinds uh, or tailwinds, however you want to look at it. And then you also have, um, you know, like you said, everybody's really been short gold. And I was looking at a lot of the COT data going back. And that a lot of times happens in a higher interest rate environment right? Because people are going to be looking to to short gold, uh, typically, because we talked about because that opposite correlation. So it's an interesting time. And I think for day traders, I think, you know, one of those things is when you when you're maybe if you're new to gold, uh, they also have micro golds, micro golds. Uh, it's one of those things where I don't look at too much once I have this idea that look, it's going higher, we have the macro and we have range expansion on a daily. 
I just tried to find simple day trading strategies and only look long. And like Tracy said, there's going to be some times where you're going to have mean reversion. It's going to happen. Uh, of course, we don't know. Uh, it's ne you're never going to perfectly time when they're going to rotate. But to me, this is just one of those one-dimensional higher moves right now that's also been ignored for so long. I think that it's been that trade that's been not really getting the love that I think a lot of people thought it would get. Trace, how about how many years ago – for years, you and I have been talking with a lot of people about how gold eventually is going to get its leg. It's a hedge, not just against inflation, but a hedge against central banks. And now when that trade finally does start to happen, you get so many people that actually want to fade it because they don't really. Because <laughs> and, and, everybody's used to shorting gold, right? It's yeah. really gone nowhere for a while. It was kind of range bound and you kind of knew the parameters of those ranges, even if you were a swing trader. You know, you, you could trade it very easily, uh, you know, up, up and down because it really didn't go anywhere. But, um, you know, it was consolidating for a couple for, for years, years. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, so, you know, it was going to break one way or the other. <laughs> No doubt. I actually have Peter Ship co uh, coming on my podcast later this month. I'd be curious to see what he says about gold. That should be interesting, kind of a plug going towards the end of the month here. But silver now, shy, very different market than gold. I know that we talk about them uh, in a lot of similar situations, but they are very different. There's so many more use cases for silver. There's an, obviously an abundance, a lot more out of it compared to gold. I think they're they're very different. Uh, you know, but we do pair them together when we look at metals. Where does silver play a role in this macro environment right now? Well, I think the the interesting thing, and I love silver. I love the silver trade right now. Um, <laughs> I've been writing about it for a couple months now. Um, so what I like about it is it's not only considered a store of value, which would be kind of a precious metal, but it's also industrial use. Right. So 45 percent of silver uses, silver usage is actually in industrials. And so um, what we're really looking at is and I've been waiting for this trade to kind of move is that we're in this, you know, green revolution, whether we like it or not. Right? <laughs> There's this huge push push for this. So. Um, if we look at, you know, uh, EVs, for example, right, every electrical component uses silver. And if you think about your ICE vehicles, there's a lot of silver in your ICE vehicle because cars have gotten more and more electrified, right? Everything's becoming more and more electrified. Now, if you look at an EV, take that electrification and multiply it times 100 because it's all electric, right? <laughs> Uh, and so there's a lot more silver in those automobiles, not to mention the a huge amount of silver that's in solar panels and not to mention the huge amount of silver that's also in wind turbines because it's a great electric uh, electric con conducer. And so if we're, you know, planning this huge build out, well, you're going to need a lot of silver, not to mention there's other markets as well, such as healthcare. Healthcare is a big use of, of silver too, but that demands remain pretty steady compared to the, you know, the demand in, in the green markets. And then if we look at production, silver really has had the same problem that the oil sector has had that we've talked about before is lack of capex. So what we have seen is no mining, increased demand. And in fact, the last three years, the supply deficit that we have is greater than the last 11 years of supply surplus. And so, and this market is supposed to be in deficit even further for 2024. And so that's your fundamental case for the silver market. And so in this environment, we talked about the, uh, the potential headwinds for gold. We talked about also what could accelerate it. Same question for silver. I think they, I think the exact same thing. I think, you know, unless you saw some sort of backtracking on this green movement, you know, that's only going to serve as a catalyst to move forward again. Silver market is very, very squirrely, as you know. So I you know, do expect, uh, you know, this market to remain volatile as it has always been. Uh, but over the long term, you know, all I see is 
the upside for, for this market right now. Interesting. So we have a macro backdrop that's similar in gold that could fuel this rally. We also have the use case. And then we go to the technical side of it. If we go to the charts here, I pulled up a weekly because we have to get perspective as day traders when we look at these markets. And I think a lot of people are going to be new to trading silver if they've ever even traded it, right? I, we're seeing a lot of people talk about it, even our friend Merritt Black, you know, people like that. He's out there. He's talking about how this is his favorite market to day trade right now. And when I look at this, I look at it and see, really, we've been in a consolidation for years. I mean, it's another one of those markets where, you know, everyone keeps saying it's going to get going. And it finally start, it is actually starting to, you know, if you were looking at this from a stock perspective, I think a lot of people would say, oh, get ready for, you know, a potential massive breakout. And what could this do? And I go to my weekly chart and I look, you have range expansion on the Bollinger Bands as Bollinger Bands are starting to point outward. We've got this $28 to even $29 plus dollar price, where I think that that's the recent highs over the last couple of years. Uh, if it pushes through there, what, what Tracy's talking about is a backdrop of what's happening on the macro side of things. I think it becomes very interesting for traders. You've also got micros for this product. And I go back to this, everybody, when you're trading these commodities or metals, and you're trading a newer product, go to the micros and also understand what's happening in the macro side, because Unlike uh, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Russell, th they could really be day traded, I think, and almost put a blind eye to up to what's happening in the macro side. I mean, that could always be a, you know, a debate uh, between styles and strategies. But I do think when you're looking at metals or any sort of commodity, it's important to know the back uh, backdrop. That's why I'm glad we got shy here today to understand what's pushing this on a much bigger level, because our short-term day strategies aren't going to be as relevant when you have that big macro backdrop alongside with technicals. And as you and I both know, Shai, anytime you have a macros uh, working with technicals, that's when you get the biggest moves in any market. Um, yeah. and, and I'll put and, copper next. And we're just uh, really quick, we're, there's a giant wedge from 2020. Uh, and then there's a smaller wedge within the wedge that we're just breaking out of now um, from 2021-ish? 2023, yeah. Yeah. So we've got like a wedge within a wedge right now and then we're just <laughs> starting to break out with it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So what we'll do is maybe we'll, uh, maybe if you post that on Twitter later, I actually want to make sure everybody knows too uh, what you're doing. Uh, we'll talk about that at the end on uh, all your commodity posts uh, and what you're doing with a couple of friends of ours, Andy Constant at Damp Spring uh, and Jimmy Jude, which is you've done an absolutely fantastic job with that. I, I want to go to, I want to go to copper and mm -hmm. You know, this is one of these markets that I think that most people have probably never traded, may never trade, but it's also getting a lot of talk right now. And as I pull this up here on the daily, you can see, once again, it, it looks somewhat similar to what we've seen in silver, uh, where we're pushing back. It hasn't quite making a high like gold has, but everyone talks about Dr. Copper Shy. Why is copper important for us to watch? Uh, and what is the macro backdrop right now on copper? Well, and the macro backdrop is very similar to silver right now because of all the use case in uh, the green movement. Once again, you know, it kind of was struggling. I mean, fundamentals are all there. Again, lack of capex. We had some mine closures in Pan a mine closure in Panama. You're having problems with production in Chile right now, um, and you have smelters in China. Um, putting production. So there's a lot of um, near-term production problems with copper right now that's giving it a boost, as well as the base, the use case. Now, what's interesting is, you know, we kind of did not, we've kind of been sideways, again, same market, kind of been sideways for a couple of years. And that was, you know, Dr. Copper's generally looked at as, you know, what's going on in the economy, particularly China, right? So China has been kind of an iffy, right? That the economy hasn't really taken off as we thought as soon as they opened from COVID. And so we had a lot of the base and industrial metals kind of languishing, ready to hear some signs of some good news in China and it just wasn't coming. You know, you had the property sector implosion, um, which obviously affects the metals markets, particularly copper. Um, 
And, you know, things just didn't look like they were getting better anytime soon. But now we're just starting to see some good numbers come out of China. We have PMI that uh, was finally over 50 for the first time in, you know, over a year. So that means what that means is they're in expansion territory above 50 is expansion, below 50 is contraction in the economy and the manufacturing sector. So we're seeing a little bit of good news. So that's helping copper as well right now. Once again, uh, you have macro alongside with technicals. Anytime we look at commodities, it's so important to understand what are the main drivers of it. And Shai, thanks for laying that out. And when you look at it here, we're in range expansion. It actually looks very similar. If I even go back to the gold chart, I mean, it looks very similar, right? Uh, and you see how uh, these markets right now really have a lot of upward momentum. And, you know, we're going to get to oil in a second because we know that everybody, a lot of people here are tuning <laughs> in what you're going to think about in oil. But when you, I just want to kind of summarize what we're seeing here in these precious metals markets right now, Shai. I mean, I'm curious, when you see this type of macro backdrop uh, and what you're seeing happening in copper, silver, and gold, at some point, do we think this is going to have any impact on equities? Is is there is there something else that maybe is happening behind the scenes that we, as a lot of us are trading S&P and NASDAQ, uh, you know, and Russell should be taking note of when you see moves like this in the metals? Well, absolutely. And we're seeing a rally across the entire commodity sector, which says to me that people are turning to hard assets as well. And so, again, that goes back to maybe everything isn't as great as the Fed says about <laughs> the economy right now, because commodity markets, hard assets, and we're even seeing, you know, we're even seeing an uptick in, you know, value. I mean, it was tech rally for the entire year last year. And now we're kind of seeing that broadening out into um, the value trade. So we're seeing, you know, value catch a bid. We're seeing commodities catch a bid. So to me, that says the market is saying, hmm, I don't know <laughs> if everything is exactly as great as they say they are. I mean, the numbers look fine. Everything looks fine. But, you know, sometimes the markets sniff out things quicker than the numbers come out. And you know that. Yeah, absolutely. And anytime I look at higher highs, whether it's in silver, copper, or gold, I always look at the velocity of it. That that to me is always the most important aspect of it because you've seen gold inch out a new high, come back in, silver, copper. But if they these moves start having velocity to the upside, that changes the dynamic in the entire marketplace and it changes the market environment. And it's something that we have to keep an eye on. Same thing I mentioned for silver and gold. If you're trading this copper markets, make sure you understand the macro backdrop, understand when the numbers are coming out, understand the different months that are expirations and all of that. So when you're pulling them up on, Ninja, uh, on your Ninja Trader, you, you're aware of the different expirations and rollovers because they're they are different. They're more frequent than you're going to see in uh, equity indexes. Last but not least, Shai, uh, you know, we're going <laughs> to go to, to oil and look at inflation's where there's not inflation's coming back in right shy i mean all these charts are telling us that <laughs> and here we are with oil uh but, you know and but, but i've been talking about this since last year i said where yeah. you know i've been talking about this and we've talked about this before where i said i just don't think that it's over yet and the, you know the fed seems to be you know job is done well let's see <laughs> <laughs> So what, what makes uh, oil, look, at it, it, we could go back to when we saw that big spike, you know, with Ukraine and Russia, it came off, it's starting to come back up, oil's back in play, seeing a lot of day traders move from equity indexes into oil, uh, cleaner looks I've been hearing, you know, grinding higher, you see range expansion, take us through the numbers, you know, what's happening behind the scenes in oil, is this really being supported by data or or no? Uh, well, I think I, I think it's yes. If we look at the fundamentals of the market, the market is starting to get really tight because of the OPEC cuts, which you know they have rolled over for another quarter, and then we also have Russian refineries that have gotten droned. So. Um, that's affecting the products market, which in turn affects the uh, the, the crude market altogether because we've seen cracks explode 
And this is bringing up the crude market, actually. This is actually being led by products, to be honest, right now. Um, so we've got, you know, Russian product off the market, believe it or not. People, I know we have sanctions, but people are still buying Russian crude and Russian products globally, even though it's not the West. Um, so you, you have that product, you know, you have product off the market because of the refinery uh, accidents there. And then you have, you know, Russia said that they're going to lower oil exports because they're going to comply with OPEC. Um, I think it's more has to do with, I think there's more damage to those refineries than they're telling us, but that's a, that's a whole nother story. But fundamentally, the market's getting tight. We've seen a pullback in U.S. production. I mean, U.S. production, we got a revision down. I think we lost Tracy just for a quick second. There she goes. Am I back? Revision down, or maybe that was just me. <laughs> oh, uh, so we have uh, we've had revisions, revisions down, downward revisions in U.S. production for November and December when the monthlies came out, and then another downward revision in the monthly by a large amount in January. And so, you know, we may have seen for a while. 2023 is being the high in U.S. shale production. And so because we've had significant revisions down over for, for the last three months, I have to say the monthly reports lag by two months. So it's lagging data, but it's better data than the weeklies, which is just kind of a guesstimate. <laughs> Um, so that said, so we're seeing, you know, U.S. shale production come down. We have Russian uh, products off the market, we have OPEC not budging their stance. So the, the market's getting tired. I know it's an election year, uh, and I'm curious, is there anything that you could foresee the government potentially to do to potentially take oil prices down? Well, uh, I think we lost her again. You hear me now? Now I have you. No, yeah, it's weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, they can't. There's not much left to dump in the SPR, right? That's so, what I was asking. Yeah. So that's a problem. They did just cancel the last refill order, obviously. Um, so I would expect them not to refill this for anymore for the rest of the year, which I've been saying forever was going to happen. <laughs> but um, yeah, so really, there's not that much they can really do right now because they kind of used all their tools in their toolbox, right? Yeah. And so, you know, outside of going to beg people for more production. <laughs> but yeah. And so that's interesting. So when you look at, you know, just to go over everything today, gold, silver, copper, fruit oil, commodities across the board, a lot of tailwinds. I mean, you don't see a lot of headwinds. It doesn't seem like Actually, there's much to come in uh, and stop this. And, you know, and the agricultural markets, uh, aside from meats, meats are up huge this year. But if you even look at the grain markets, the grain markets are down, comparatively speaking, to the rest of commodity sector performance. But now we're seeing an uptick in grains, too. And so, you know, I think this is going to be a huge headwind for the Fed and for inflation, even though they don't count energy as inflation. But energy is a major input to everything. Right. And so those costs get passed on to the consumer, obviously. And so I think this is going to be I, I think this is going to be a headwind. Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, Shai, thank you so much. Uh, I want to make sure everybody knows to follow Shai uh, on Twitter. Uh, she's one of the best uh, when it comes to really macro everything, but really the best when it comes to commodities and understanding what's happening behind the scenes, as you could tell, in metals uh, and also uh, in oil and all the ag space. Also, Shai, tell everybody where they could find more about what you're doing uh, with your podcast, your newsletter, everything that you've got going on. So yes, yeah, so I've got at my my drop markets podcast, which is at my dark markets <laughs> on, and I don't know everybody knows. I every Wednesday I have a spaces from eleven a.m. to twelve p.m. Um, it covers a wide variety of subjects every week, so tune into that. It's right on X, 
Um, uh, and then we also have separate podcast, um, which is on YouTube and you can find you know, what we have, uh, the one-on-one the, the -on -one hour interviews um, that are video on uh, YouTube, on our channel, Mic Drop Markets YouTube channel. Um, I also am, have a project with Andy Constant and Jimmy Jude. Um, and so you can find my, I'm uh, helping, uh, it's a collaboration with them and I'm just covering commodity markets. Um, and you can find that at dampspring.com. And then of course, you can go to hilltowerresourceadvisors.com uh, to find my stuff and my analyst stuff. Shai's a workaholic, everybody. I've known her for years. She's one of the hardest working people in this space. I uh, definitely recommend going and following and finding everything that Shai's got going on. She's also in my free Discord, which is great to hear from Shai uh, when she's got time to come in and chime in in commodities. And I just want to say one thing, Tommy, I know before we bring you in here, I want to show everybody this. We talked a lot about commodities today. Starting Sunday, May 12th, CME Group's going to have actually a commodities challenge. Uh, where you're going to be able to trade these markets that we discussed today. I think it's extremely important uh, for traders before you go and live trade commodities, understand the macro backdrop, go to Shy Girl, her stuff, everything that's going on there, understand the tick increments, know that there's micros, uh, understand expirations, data points that are coming out, because they are different than what you're traditionally trading if you're coming from S&P, NASDAQ, Forex, wherever you're coming from. They're just different beasts. And I think it's important to do your homework before you step into these markets. This CME Group Challenge, you sign up, it's it's free to sign up. First place is $2,500. Second place is $1,750. Third place is $1,250. Uh, and they're going to have leaderboards, all sorts of fun stuff. And you can find that. Uh, uh, there'll be a link in my YouTube description, and I'll also post that on X. Tommy, you're on mute. We'll get them. Sorry about that. Wow. Okay. So thank you for that, um, Shy Girl, Tracy, for coming, being on Ninja Trader Live. We'd love to have you back on. Anthony, great show as usual. Um, yeah, I was muted because I was watching and it was a great show. Really interesting. But uh, we're going to take a break, quick break, and we'll be right back. Jim Cagnina will be doing some Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed. So stick around. Thanks so much. So, you want to be a trader? Well, you should know you're not alone. Over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial markets. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app with the power to customize how you trade on the go. You can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Technical analysis made easy. A starting place for new traders. When do I place my trade? Where do I set my stop loss or profit target? All good questions that traders need to answer on a regular basis. One of the ways traders get to those answers is by using technical analysis in a historical price chart. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit NinjaTrader.com to get started today. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app with the power to customize how you trade on the go. You can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, 
crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at NinjaTrader.com. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit NinjaTrader.com to get started today. All right, we are back. Ninja Trader Platforms Unleashed segment. Appreciate everybody being here today. It is April 4th. My name is Jim Cagnina. We're going to talk about trading, placing trades and managing trades from the chart itself. A lot of folks like to use the Ninja Trader Superdome, which I understand, right? That's what I used to always use before I decided, hey, maybe there's a better way to place and manage trades directly on the charts. And we've, you know, me and Tom Schneider, they do a lot of that in the mornings, but I thought I'd just kind of go over the mechanics of how to actually do that. So um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the chart. Again, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, I'm going to minimize this screen a little bit so I have a little bit more real estate. I, I, we have these Zoom windows and all sorts of windows popping up everywhere. I'm going to move these over a little bit. All right. So I have an E-mini S&P chart up on the screen right now. It's a 10-minute candle chart, nothing fancy. I have volume weighted average price, lower panel. I just have the regular volume on there, and then I have volume profile on the left. And um, I'm happy with my chart. My chart is set up. Now, to, act, to make sure you activate the ability to trade from the chart, you have to activate it, right? I'm going to go all the way up to the top up here. And I'm going to go to the, it looks like an, one of those old fashioned egg beaters. You know what I mean? With the, with the little propellers on, you know, on a thing or that, you know, you're mashing potatoes, this little air, this little icon at the top, it's called chart trader. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to get a drop down menu. And you'll notice there's three different categories. We could have chart trader turned off, which is, which means you cannot place a trade on the chart. And if you're, if you don't want to place a trade on the chart and you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, then just keep it off. That's okay. Then we have two others. We have a, a category called chart trader. And then uh, a chart trader hidden. Now, tra chart trader is going to open up a new panel, which I'm going to show you in a second, uh, which will give us a whole bunch of options. And then um, underneath it, um, chart trader hidden means that panel isn't opened up, but you could still use your mouse to actually place trades. In other words, chart trader is activated, but the panel is hidden. That's all. So let's go ahead and click in the middle one, chart trader. And it's going to open up this panel, like I suggested. On the right hand side is this panel. And then we have a whole bunch of buttons and some stuff here. It doesn't look like much, doesn't look like much, but it does an awful lot of stuff. So there's these quick buttons up here at the top called uh, uh, buy market. If you want to, if you want to buy on the market, if you want to sell with a market order, if you want to join the, uh, if you want to join the bid uh, or you want to join the offer with a limit order, you could do that as well. If you want to reverse, which be careful with the reverse button. Uh, but it's the possibility of a position you want to reverse it or you, or you have a bracket, you want to reverse it, um, that you'd use that button. And then you'd have the close button or you want to close everything up, right? It's like the panic button kind of. Um, and so, and then flatten entry, P and L. So there's all sorts of data here that you're going to get as well. And then we have some, uh, some dialogue boxes here, some drop down boxes, right? So the instrument, this is the market, right? This is the symbol for the E-mini S&P. It's ES, June uh, uh, 24. It matches what I have on the chart. So I'm not going to change that time and force. This isn't very important really, because most of us are day trading. Um, and just, you can keep that at day and then make sure you have the right account here, right? Some people have more than one account. Some people have a real account and a SIM account. And so just make sure you have the right account activated when you're ready to place a trade, just, you know, don't place a SIM trade in a live account don't place a live account in a SIM account. Cause then you'll be calling me up and saying, Hey, you know, where's my position? 
So make sure you have the right account set up here. And so I have SIM account one set up right there. And that's a drop down menu you could toggle. So order, uh, order quantity is the next thing you could decide, right? You could, you know, how many contracts do you want to trade at a time? When you place an order, do you want to do one contract or one unit, as I call it, or two or four or five? And you could use the arrow boxes to change that, or you could use that little, it looks like a calculator almost to, these are presets, right? You can make presets here and you could go ahead and click on your size. Um, and you could, uh, it, which would put it in that box right there. We're going to skip it at one for now, and we can change it up later. Uh, ATM strategy, we're going to talk about this, and this looks like nothing, but it's really, really big. So when you hit that drop down menu here, you can create a custom uh, automated trade management strategy. And we've talked about this before, um, and there's all sorts of different types of strategies you can create. You could create a simple bracket order, order a multi target bracket order, a trailing stop. Um, a jump on your stop. There's all sorts of different combinations that you could add with this little dialog box. And we'll, we'll, we'll step into it if we have time today, uh, which we will. But um, it's, it's very powerful. It doesn't look like a lot, but it is. And then you have some other stuff like reverse on stop, reverse at target, target chase. You want to chase the target um, and um, some other options as well. So we'll get into that uh, in a couple of seconds. So Let's start out with the basis. This is stuff that me and Tom do uh, on a regular basis. So, um, and I use, I use the mouse a lot, right? So I'll pick a price where I want to enter an order. And let's say I want to go short, um, you know, let's say I want to go, I want to sell a contract, right? And in futures trading, you can sell a contract uh, first. You don't have to, you know, sell a contract only after you're long, after you buy one. You can sell one first if you think the market's going to go down. And so I'm just going to right click at my price and this dialog box pops up with a whole bunch of options here. And in the middle, I, you can see, I could place a sell limit order where my, where my crosshairs was, uh, market if touched, uh, or a, you know, a stop or a stop limit. I'm gonna go ahead and do stop. I'm just gonna do a, a limit order to sell one contract. And so once I place it, um, you'll see my quantity is one. It says sell, LMT means limit. And it draws a line across here to show you on your chart where uh, where you place that order. And I find that helpful for me when I'm doing technical analysis and I'm looking for, um, uh, I wanna be precise with respect to support and resistance. Now, once you do that on a live account, this order gets sent to the exchange, right? It gets sent to the exchange and you're in the order book, right? You're waiting behind whatever limit orders were there before you to go ahead, because it's first in, first out, to get a fill at 52.9650. Now, maybe we don't get a fill. Maybe this market breaks down and we don't get a fill, but it's in the order book. It can't trade above your price without giving you your fill. So um, uh, it's, it's in there. It, you can see where it's at with the label. You know, it looks like a cocktail stir, kind of, you know, those little cocktail stir things. Um, now, you could also cancel and replace this order by simply putting your mouse on it holding your left mouse key down, dragging it to a new price. I'll drag it down and uh, click. And I've just canceled and replaced that order. I just changed it. I just dragged it down. So now I have a new order at a different place. And it happens that quickly. It's very, very quick with electronic trading. I, I don't know the measurements or you know, nanoseconds, milliseconds, whatever it is. It's just very, very quick. And once you place it, you'll see it's there resting, right? So it's, it's, it's an order. It's in the order book. I just moved it down again. Uh, really, really easy to do. Now that's a that's a sell limit. Now, alternatively, if you wanted to put um, uh, an order in to buy at the market, again, I'm going to right click my mouse and I'll just go down to the bottom of my rect, a little bit higher than my rectangle here. Right click, and I'll, I could do the, I could do the same thing, and I could say, hey, I would like to I would like to send a limit order to the exchange to buy a contract at fifty two eighty eight fifty. Click on that. And there it is. There's my order. So now I have two limit orders on my chart. And again, same thing, cancel and replace. You're just going to drag the order. And really, I'm using the word cancel and replace because that's an accurate description. But really, I'm just moving my order. I'm changing my order higher, right? Just, the, just by dragging that up with the mouse. Now, I could also click on the number and change the, and change the lot size to, what, to two or three or four or whatever I want to do. And if I wanted to change it to two, and then I would hit that checkbox, right? X would be no, I'm canceling. The checkbox would be, yeah, let's do it. And now I have, and now I'm trying to buy two contracts at this particular price, right? So two, two contracts at this particular price. Um, and then it's, it's sending two one lots here. And we, there's reasons for that, but you don't have to really worry about that. 
So if I want to cancel, I click on it again, and there's the X. Now, if I want to cancel the order completely, I go over to the right-hand side, and you'll see a, an X there, and you can just right-click, and it cancels the order. So it's really, really easy. So let's go ahead and think about, all right, so let's see if we can get filled on this. I'm going to go ahead and force a fill here. I'm just going to chase this down a little bit so we can get filled. And be patient with me, everybody. I'm going to adjust this chart so we can see it a little bit better here. Get a little bit more, a little better picture. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to move it down. I'm just going to chase it to try to get filled. All right, so we're filled, right? And it shows me, you know, I've sold one at uh, 52.93.75. And the, and, the, and the label changed, right? It's red. And that means I'm short. If I were long, the label would have a little green, uh, a green dot there. And then uh, my performance of the trade, right? It's showing me how many ticks I'm up or down or how many, how many points I'm up or down um, changes. Right now it's zero, which means I'm flat. I have, I'm not making money, I'm not losing money. And it moves around in real time, right? That's mark to market, the idea of mark to market. It moves around in real time. So you see this PL moving around um, as the market price changes. And now it's not changing too dramatically right now. Um, we're all, you know, pretty good. Slowing down, low volume day today. Everybody knows that. Um, so the second thing I'm going to do right now, I'm short. I have, a, I, I have a position in the market. So the second thing I want to do, and this is very important, I want to place a stop loss. In other words, you know, I, I, you know, I think the market's going to go down, but I might be wrong. I might be incorrect. It might, might go up. And I don't want an unlimited loss, right? I want to, I want to try to control that uh, with risk management the best that I can. So I would put a buy stop in. So I'm going to go up to an area that I think might be interesting. Um, I'm going to look at this, you know, where my crosshairs here is. I'm just saying, okay, there's some, there's a nice area of uh, resistance that started here, uh, 9.50 to 10 o'clock as an example, and it's lasted all session long. So I'm also going to respect this high wick right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a stop one tick above that high wick. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to add. Now I'm short, right? I'm short. So it's going to be a buy stop, buy stop market. It's going to behave like a market order, but I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to, I'm going to add it to the chart. And again, um, let me move this out of the way a little bit. Um, you can see the label here is telling me, hey, you're trying to, you know, this is what it's saying. You're trying to. Uh, you, uh, you place an order, it's sent to the exchange, and this, is, uh, this will be triggered, right? This will be triggered uh, if, the, if the market goes against me up to 5,300 uh, 5, half, right? 5,300 half. Now, don't follow live along home with me right now. Again, this is just an example, a sample on how to use the chart trader. I'm not telling anybody to go short right now. I'm just putting in trades based on what the candle's telling me. Now, the last part of the trade, the last component, the last component of this is a profit target, right? So I'm going to go down here. I, I want to buy this contract back at a lower price, right? Remember, we're buying low, selling high, selling high, buying low. That's the objective. So I'll go down to my rectangle down here um, uh, where I identified an old area of um, resistance, which I now think is support. And I'm going to right click again, just right click my mouse. I get that pop up menu again. And I'm gonna I'm gonna place a buy limit order, a buy limit order, and that would be my profit target. And it's color coded a little different, right? It's a little different. It's light blue. Um, so this is the anatomy of every trade in the world, pretty much: a position, a profit target, and a stop loss. Best practices: get that stop loss in. Don't don't not have a stop loss, even if it's a catastrophic stop loss. Just get it in because you never know. Um, so. Right now, it's, this is more of a swing trade, a longer term trade. I could wait, I could hold on to it, I could do whatever I want, or I could tighten things up, right? Let's say as an example, well, too much time is, it's taken too much time. I thought once we broke through the volume weighted average price line, we we're going to really start crashing. It hasn't done that yet. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to pull my stop down. Again, cancel, replace. I'm going to bring it to the uh, top of that wick right there. Right. Same thing with the profit target. Well, this trade's taking too long and I'm just talking out loud, right? This is just an example. Things I'm talking, uh, you know, I want to bring it up and I'm tighten up my profit target a little bit um, because my expectations of a really big break have been thwarted right now. And so that's how I would do it with the chart trader. I wouldn't have to go find the dome. I wouldn't have to scroll on the trade, you know, the Ninja Trader Superdome since these orders are more than 10 ticks away from the last bid and offer. And I could kind of just sit back and, and, and watch the trade go. 
So that's kind of uh, that's kind of number one. And again, if I wanted to cancel either of these orders, you just click on that X on right next to the Y axis here and click on it and it will uh, cancel it. If you want to close, let's demonstrate that. Uh, there's a close button up here on the upper right and I'm going to click on it. And two things happen. Well, three things happened really. Um, the uh, limit order uh, target was canceled. The stop loss was canceled and it flattened my position it flattened my position at the market, right? So it's kind of like a, like a panic button almost, right? Or it's a quick and easy way to get out uh, of a trade by clicking on that close button. So that's, it's kind of important, right? I'm not necessarily a fan of a lot of these other things, um, but again, you could go market orders, you could, you, know, you could join the bid, you could join the ask, you could reverse, uh, you could do all of that stuff. So that's kind of number one. So what I want to do though, is I want to put another order in. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, we'll, we'll go, no, I'll do, I'll do it. I'll do it the way my preference, right click, sell limit. All right. So I'm filled right now. And you can see it notifies me where I'm filled. You can see all of these, uh, all of these um, labels here. You know, I sold one at what price and during what candle. Uh, I sold another one at the next candle at a different price. I bought one. I closed the position out here uh, and it has a little, let me see if I could really, really kind of show this a little bit better. A um, little carrot, right? Blue carrot means I bought, red carrot means I sold. And so um, that will also help you at the end of the day when you go back and look at your candle chart and say, well, where did I place the orders? What time frame did I place them? Where did I place them with respect to uh, support and resistance? What went right? What went wrong? And all of that stuff. Now, the, another thing you could do, which I think is particularly helpful, is I could put, a, I could put the same uh, stop loss and profit target in. And what I could do is I could, I could create a simple bracket around my position. And I could, I'm just going to right click in this white space down here. And it'll bring up this, this drop down menu. And you'll see OCO order. Order cancels other. That's what it stands for. Order cancels other. And I could select it. Once I select it, you'll see in the upper right corner, OCO is green. It's green as a go, right? It means it's turned on, right? So order cancels other is turned on. And so the first thing I want to do, now this is important. The first thing I want to do is place a profit target. So I'm going to, let's just go ahead and place my profit target first, right click, buy limit. And again, I'm just making up prices and I'm going to put my stop loss second, right click um, and buy stop because remember we're short. And now I've done a similar trade, but it's an OCO, order cancels other. So now my hands are off the mouse, right? If I get stopped out of this trade, right? If my stop gets hit, then my, my profit target will automatically be canceled. I won't have to cancel it manually. Opposite's true. My profit target gets hit, then my stop loss automatically canceled. I won't have to, I won't have to cancel it manually. That's, that's called, that's an, it's an automated trade management function of the Ninja Trader platform. And it's, um, it's pretty handy. Now, now you, I always recommend, even when you do this, pay attention, right? Don't, you know, go, you know, leave the house, go to Starbucks, whatever you do, um, pay attention. So you still want to kind of, uh, monitor the trade. Um, and, uh, and you still want to stay connected to the, to the, uh, to the internet and your platform connected. But it's really, really handy because what you could do uh, now is you're not, you don't have to worry about being whipsawed, right? And whipsaw is a thing where you get a, a huge, you don't have to be worried that much, right? Whipsaw is like, well, boom, you get, you, uh, the market spikes up, you get stopped out, and then you're, you're scrambled to try to cancel your limit order. Then the market goes right back the opposite way, and then you get a double fill, right? And so then you'll, you'll end up in that scenario with, you'd be long down here. At ninety at ninety one seventy five, and you would no no intention of being long down there, right? That was your profit target. So there's a lot of reasons why you might do this, and and also discipline is another thing, right? Discipline's another thing. My trade's in there right now, and I'm going to let it go. Um, now people would sometimes I get a call says, "Well, Jim, I got the OCO one, but I want to change my limit order. Grab it, move it to a different price, click, and you changed it. The OCO is still in effect, right?" Uh, the, the OCO is still in effect. So you could modify the stops. You could modify the limits, even though the OCO has been activated um, and change the price of your trade. Does that make sense?
All right. Um, where are we at now? Okay. So that, that was, so we covered how to, you know, put an order in a basic order, how to manage that order, how to add an automated uh, bracket uh, around that order. And there's more stuff we could do. There's, there's more stuff we could do here. So let's, let's explore that a little bit. Now I want to intentionally get stopped out just to demonstrate the OCO. And again, don't follow live. When I say that, even when we're trying to, you know, <laughs> there we go. So boom, I got stopped out. You know, that other, that other order, the profit target automatically canceled. Order cancels other. Um, if you don't want to see the labels here, if it's too cluttered, you can get rid of those. Just go to right click. Again, a dialog box pops up. Click on data series. Another dialog box pops up. Scroll all the way to the bottom here and you'll see plot executions. I have text and markers set. I could hit that drop down menu and just say do not plot. Then you won't see those, right? If you want the if you want markers only, those little carrots, you could do markers only, right? Well, however you want to do it. Uh, apply and okay. Sometimes if you do a lot of trades within within one candle's time frame, there'll be a little bit too much information there, right? It'll be a little clustered. Um, but it's a nice feature, I think. So in any event, um, let's also so that's kind of the basic stuff here. I know, I know we have limited time today, but I do want to show you how to customize some of this stuff. So we can go to custom. And uh, again, we could get more fancy, right? We could get into more depth and maybe we'll cover this next week on some, uh, some, some more interesting uh, types of orders, but let's just do a multi-target order, right? So let's go ahead and say, um, I would like to put a trade, a, a two unit trade or two contract trade on the table which is going to have, so I changed the order quantity to two, and I want to have two different targets though. So I have target one, and I want to add a target two, right? And since this is two units, uh, target one is going to be a one, one contract target. Target two is going to be a two contract tar target. Now I can set different stop losses if I want, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set them both. We'll just set them both at eight ticks, right? Or two full points. I'll go ahead and change those. And then for a profit target, Let's just say um, I would like to get the first target. Uh, I would like to liquidate one of my, if, if the market goes my way, I'd like to liquidate one of my uh, targets at four, right? Or some other number. You could do eight, you could do 10, you could do whatever you'd like. Let's go ahead and do 10. Um, and then for the second target, then, hey, I want to liquidate this at uh, 12, after 12 ticks if, go, if it goes my way. So stop loss at eight. Profit target 10 and 12, splitting these things in two, right? Now I could save this as a strategy if I want by saying save as template, or I could just hit okay. And on the right-hand side, you'll see this little I here. It says custom, I, it's in play right now. It's ready to go. So if I go ahead and I'm gonna get long this time, I'm gonna right click and it's gonna remember two, two, uh, what did I do wrong? Two, 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 two. I might have the wrong account set up here. Let's try it again. Maybe I put it in the wrong spot. Nope, getting the same error message. Please use a new OCO. Oh, you know what I did wrong? I'm sorry. Let's rewind here, folks. This OC, when I right clicked here on the white spot, I still have OCO checked. This was for adding a OCO after a position was already established. So I'm gonna uncheck that. You'll see at the upper right that OCO things went away. You'll still see I have custom here. So that OCO, that the mistake I made was that green OCO was turned on and you turn it on and off by right clicking in the white spot. So I think that was my, I think that was what I did wrong. Let's try again. All right, so that was exactly what I did. So I sold it here, right on a limit order. My stop automatically went in eight ticks up. My profit target uh, automatically went in. One of them went in 10 to, uh, what I said, have it at 10 and 12. And so you can see that they're different. It's they're labeled properly two, one, and one. Let's move this back down. Two, one, and one. And the idea here is if the market comes down and I achieve my first profit target, then my stop will automatically change to one a one contract stop because I don't need two contract stops anymore. I just need one. And so it's a way to kind of uh, um, have multiple targets on a position that's more than one unit. It could be two contracts, three contracts, four contracts, however, however you want. 
And then the uh, instructions are going to behave just like you wanted them to do. And the same thing, you could drag your stop down, right? You could drag your stop down to a different price. Instructions are still good. Drag your target up. Instructions are still good. And let's see if we can get this to, to cooperate. Let's we'll see if the, we, have a, we, have, we have 30 seconds left. We'll see if we can get it to cooperate. And it's okay if we go a little bit over. So uh, I'll tighten it up just to demonstrate. Let's get this even tighter here. What I want to happen is my first profit target to be hit. So you can see how this two lot will change. And I'll move up my second one as well. I should have done this in the micro NASDAQ, my bad. Right now we're kind of like stuck in the mud here at uh, 97 even. Again, tighten up my stop here a little bit more. So I'm gonna force the fill guys. I'm just gonna move this up. So I got filled and you see the stop is now one. And the, um, my, my second target is still in play where I canceled and replaced it too. So I know I had to kind of accelerate the trade idea, but I think you get the idea, right? Multi-target bracket, simple target bracket, how to turn on and off OCO. Remember, I turned it on manually here after I had a position. After you have a position, you can turn it on. But when you go ahead and use the uh, actual ATM strategy, then make sure that is turned off. That was the, that was the one hiccup today. But we figured it out. And it all worked accordingly. We'll do some more and more of this stuff uh, uh, next week. But I appreciate everybody being here and participating uh, with us today. Coming up next, coming up next, um, Ed Jerkin from Ninja Trader is going to join Michael Burke, and he's going to uh, Ed's going to talk about some ninja tricks navigating through the web portal. So I appreciate everybody being here today. Um, talk to you later. Uh, we'll be right back. So, you want to be a trader? Well, you should know you're not alone. Over the past several years, record numbers of people have set up their very own online trading accounts. There's never been an easier time or more inexpensive way for do-it-yourselfers to get started trading the financial market. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app. With the power to customize how you trade on the go, you can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Technical analysis made easy. A starting place for new traders. When do I place my trade? Where do I set my stop loss or profit target? All good questions that traders need to answer on a regular basis. One of the ways traders get to those answers is by using technical analysis in a historical price chart. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit NinjaTrader.com to get started today. Better futures start now with the Ninja Trader mobile app. With the power to customize how you trade on the go, you can quickly and easily place trades with a single swipe and view index, financial, energy, metal, crypto, and more futures markets and access over 40 built-in indicators plus custom indicators all from your phone. Stay up to date at all times by enabling notifications. Get started today at ninjatrader.com. Join over 800,000 users who trust NinjaTrader as their futures trading platform of choice. Access the world's most popular futures markets and trade seamlessly across devices, including PC, Mac, or mobile. Get started with $50 margins and commissions as low as $0.09. Cents. Need support? We're available 24 hours a day, 5 days a week. Want to personalize your trading setup? Connect with our ecosystem of third-party developers, building trading indicators, and more. Visit NinjaTrader.com to get started today.
Hey, everybody, we're back for our midday wrap up. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm joined with uh, one of my colleagues here at Ninja Trader, Ed Jerkin, who's the senior manager for revenue and operations. Ed, thanks for being with me today. Mike, thanks for having me as well. I hope you're doing good. So, last time you were here, we didn't really have enough time to cover all the things that you wanted to cover in the account dashboard. So, you're back, and uh, it's uh, we're going to give you a chance to to finish that work up. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you want to talk about? Sure. So uh, for your Ninja Trader account, you actually have a lot of tools at your disposal in our account dashboard. And I wanted to just take a few minutes and go over those with our audience here and let them know some of the things that are at their fingertips that they can do to uh, impact their account anytime, 24 hours a day. Uh, and um, yeah, we're going to share my screen and I can uh, give a little guided tour of that here. So when you log in to your account with us, you're going to see our home screen here. Uh, this is going to give a list out here of your accounts. I just have this one live account, uh, and I don't have a demo account associated with this particular account, but let's say you do. In fact, we can even start with that. So on a demo account, you can go in here, and you can actually uh, impact your balance. So you can uh, add funds to your account, to your demo account, that is can actually take those away. So I'm on my demo account here and I'm gonna go into the user account menu here. There's, that's this little blue icon in the upper right-hand corner. You'll click this, you'll click settings. And this is gonna take you to a little bit different home screen. This is gonna be where you can actually get behind or get under the hood of your Ninja Trader account. Right here, we have modify balance. Now, of course, this is only gonna be for demo accounts. Uh, if, if it were possible to just add funds freely to your live accounts, you probably wouldn't be in business right now, uh, but you can go and add funds or take funds away from your demo account right here by clicking modify balance. So I'm gonna click that. Right now I have a, a little under 49,000, but let's say you know that's too much for me. Maybe uh, I'm only gonna put two or $3,000 into my account and I wanna make my demo account more realistic. What I can do here is actually put in a minus sign. And let's say I wanna get that down. I wanna take away 45,000 from that to get it close to about 3,000. And do that here, hit submit. Now my new balance is uh, $3,803.70, just like that. Uh, so this is something that you can do on your own. You can go in and change it without having to interface with one of our reps. Let's say you maybe change your mind and you said, you know, I kind of like having a, a larger balance. It, it's impacting me psychologically to have that low of an amount. You can go back in, just pop back in 45K. Oh, geez. So I guess it's only allowing you to do it once per hour. But, uh, you know, later on this morning, I could go in and I could change that back. So uh, that's just one of the tools that we have available for you, specifically for your demo account, is to uh, to be able to alter your balance there. So let's swing over to my live account and get into uh, some of these here. We're gonna go back to that settings menu by clicking that blue icon in the upper right-hand corner, then clicking settings. And I wanna point you to these risk settings here. So this is where you can actually go in and you can, you can set a daily profit limit or a daily loss limit, and then a weekly profit or loss limit to your account right in here. So if you were to say, you know, I can uh, get a little passionate when I'm trading uh, and uh, I've noticed, you know, maybe I'm chasing after profits or uh, getting into trades after I might have lost more than I would have liked to in a day, you can actually come in here when you're not trading and set a daily loss limit. Let's say, you know, I only want to lose $200 a day. You can put that in. You can save it. What will happen is when uh, you have losses that hit the $200 mark, uh, that, and that includes your commissions and fees per trade, all of your positions will be liquidated, and then all open orders that you have will be canceled. Uh, so it'll effectively shut down your account once it hits that. Now, it's important to note that uh, this does not supersede our margin policy or your balance. So, you know, if you only have 100 bucks in the account and are trading e-micros, if you have a daily loss limit of $200, well, you're going to have a margin violation uh, well before that uh, limit is hit. So this does; uh, these do need to work within the parameters of our margin policy and your account balance, uh, but they're a great tool. 
One thing that you can do for an additional layer of security with this is to click this option here that says lock risk settings if trading locked. So what this will do is this will actually completely lock your account for the rest of the trading session uh, if that either the profit limit or the loss limit is hit. If you don't have this on, you can just go in and change your loss uh, or profit targets to be uh, you know, larger and it'll get you back into the market. If you found that you really want to have this locked where you have no way to get back in and, and enter the market again, you can uh, you can toggle this lock risk settings if trading locked. And again, it'll be closed for the rest of the trading session and you'll be able to get back into the market at 5 p.m. Central. In fact, uh, our support staff here, we've even trained them to not unlock this for people. So if you find yourself where you're in a position where you have this locked and, and you really want to get back in, we will not let you in. I mean, of course, if there's an extreme case, we might. But like the idea is like you set this up, you wanted it locked, so it's locked. Uh, so I think it's a great tool. It's a great way for you to manage your account, manage your losses and profits, uh, and uh, kind of take that emotional element out of things, uh, or at least out of the picture, so that you're less likely to to maybe do something based on emotion as opposed to uh, you know a sober frame of mind. So. So let's move here into the plans tab of this section. Again, these are all things that you can do, uh, ways to have an impact on your account, um, right from your fingertips 24 hours a day. The first item here is our account plan. So NinjaTrader does offer three different account plans for uh, its brokerage customers. Uh, everyone by default when they open up an account is going to be on our free plan. Uh, and that gets you, you know, access to all of NinjaTrader's trading platforms. Uh, almost all of our advanced features, I'm gonna to touch on the one that it doesn't include in a couple of minutes here, uh, but this gets you access to all of the platform's advanced features. Uh, and uh, it does, it is associated with our full price commission rate. So that rate is 35 cents per contract for eMicros, uh, and then $1.29 per contract per side for uh, standard size features contracts. If you're doing any kind of significant trading volume, definitely makes sense to at least consider upgrading your account plan. And what I mean by that is you can pay $99 a month to get a lower commission rate. So you see here, uh, this would bring your commission rate down to 25 cents per contract per side for eMicros or uh, 99 cents for standard size features. So savings of 30 cents on the standard side, savings of a dime on the eMicros. Think about it and do the math. If you're trading, what would it be? So it's a hundred bucks a month. If you're doing several hundred contracts a month on the standard size futures, you're gonna wind up saving more in commissions uh, than that $99 cost. So it might make a lot of sense for you. And what's nice about this is that it is just a monthly commitment. It does auto renew, but you can turn it on and turn it off at will. So if maybe you're going on a break and you know uh, on a little on a vacation in June, you could shut this down, not pay that 99 bucks. But when you are actively trading, you can get that lower commission rate and save a few bucks. We also have our lifetime account plan, uh, a great value. Uh, you know, Again, if you're doing that high volume trading, those savings on your commission rates are gonna cover that cost. So it's a 1499 uh, one-time payment or four payments of, I think it's 400, no, it's 500. Uh, so. Uh, you can pay it in installments or you can do it one time, but this does get you our lowest commission rate. And if you look here, 70, 70 cents savings per contract per side on the standard size futures, uh, and that's a buck 40 round turn. So if you do about a thousand trades, that'll uh, cover that cost. So again, something to consider, you can do this all right here. Just as importantly, we have our market data subscriptions. So this you can take care of again, it's under our plans tab here. Right now I am subscribed to the CME group bundle. What this is, is this is a bundle for uh, all US futures contracts. Uh, so the CME, CBOT, COMEX and NYMEX are all included in this. And we do give you a little discount here. So they are normally $4 a month uh, per exchange. And we give you all four for uh, the price of $12 a month. This is probably the most popular data option. Uh, but if I did want to change this, I could click right here and go update subscription. 
So right now I have this here. And what's going to be interesting to see is if I were to go here and if I, let's say I have the bundle and I wanted to add the board of trade, let's say I wanted to trade the, uh, the Dow Jones e-micro contract. It won't let me update it because I have this technically in my uh, data bundle. So if you have the bundle and you're thinking, well, I need the CBOT, well, you, guess what? You've already got it uh, if this is checked, so there's no need to take any action. So I'd have to scroll all the way down here to find a couple of the exchanges that I'm not currently subscribed to. I would just check these off uh, and add them to my subscription, and then I'd be all set. One thing that can uh, trip up people here, let me get back to my plan section, because uh, this is something important uh, that I, I want to point out here. Uh, one thing that can uh, get people tripped up a little bit is uh, if they do want, let's say they want to remove the bundle and only trade the, the CME exchange or the CBOT, in those cases, you'll actually want to cancel the renewal of your data subscription. There's no way to subtract the data that you have while you're in a subscription. You can only add to it. Uh, so if you're subscribed to multiple exchanges and you want to bring that down to just maybe one or two exchanges, you do actually need to cancel the renewal of that subscription and resubscribe at the start of the month. Uh, just so you know, and just so you're aware, uh, you will continue to have access to all of the data feeds you paid for. Canceling your renewal just cancels the renewal of it. It doesn't actually stop the feed. Uh, so that's one thing, you know, I, I do uh, do a little bit of customer support here at NinjaTrader. And I do find that uh, some of our customers do get tripped up by this. Uh, again, they're trying to uh, reduce the data subscriptions that they have while still maintaining some active data. There's no way to take those away. Uh, what you have to do is you have to cancel data, uh, the renewal of your data, go back in that next month. And again, you don't lose anything you paid for. You just, it's not renewed. So gonna hit the pause button for a second right now. Uh, see hey, if Ed, Mike I have has a quick any, question yeah. for you. What's up? So let's say I want to trade something that I don't have real-time data for. Yeah. So let's say I don't have real-time data for crude oil on sure. the NYMEX. Can mm -hmm. I still trade NYMEX without real-time data? No. Uh, so the data feed is required. Uh, so that's, that is something that uh, I'm sure some of our traders have come up against. Uh, they've maybe tried, tried to place a trade in crude oil when they were subscribed to just the CME uh, only data feed. Uh, which they were using for, you know, S&P or NASDAQ. Uh, when they go to try to trade crude oil, uh, an error message pops up saying that they need to subscribe to that. Uh, so in that case, Mike, what they would want to do is go in, update their subscription, and add the NYMEX. And then next month, the NYMEX and whatever else they had would renew. Perfect. Thanks. Of course. Great. Uh, so I do want to talk about, uh, well, we've got about uh, nine minutes here. I'm going to go through these real quick here. Uh, our plan add-ons. This order flow plus is actually something that's included in that lifetime plan. Uh, so uh, if you want this suite of indicators uh, to, uh, you know, to use on your NinjaTrader web, desktop, and mobile platforms, you can uh, purchase this a la carte for $59 a month which could be a great option for somebody who's maybe not doing a ton of trading volume and not seeing the need for that lifetime purchase or that just wants to try this out. And then we also have our multiple broker add-on for the uh, NinjaTrader desktop platform. This would be something for, uh, for a user that you know, wants to use an, a, another brokerage connection in addition to their NinjaTrader brokerage connection. Uh, let's say you know with interactive brokers, uh, they could, connect that account and their Ninja Trader account, they'd be able to go uh, purchase that here. Again, this is under the plans tab of the settings menu right on your Ninja Trader dashboard. Okay. So I'll jump in here. We have our profile section. A lot of things you can do here. You can, uh, you can change your username. So in the past, this would be something that you'd maybe need to give us a call to do. Uh, or send an email to take care of. Uh, this you can uh, click right here, change that username, uh, and uh, takes less than 10 seconds. I've done it before. And the same is true for resetting your password. 
If you do want to change the email address on file that uh, is associated with your account, that is something that you'll need to contact us for, uh, but we're happy to help and it's a, it's a pretty seamless process there. And you can update any of the information that you provided when you applied for your account with us. Uh, so this is again, the populated from, um, from your account application. If you ever wanted to change this, let's say you moved. Uh, or you had a change in your financial situation, you could go right here. Our preferences tab allows you to change the way uh, the platform appears. I'm a big light mode person, but uh, I realize that I am uh, of a small group uh, that prefers that. So you could set this to be dark again with just one click of the mouse, uh, or you could set this to be uh, light during the day, dark in the evening. I am, again, a light mode kind of guy. Uh, and then the last thing I want to touch on uh, here is going to take a couple of minutes, uh, and it's our transfer section. So this is where you can actually go to uh, perform uh, deposits and withdrawals to and from your NinjaTrader account and your bank. Those of us here that are in the U.S. are able to fund a, an account with uh, by ACH transfer. How to do this is to link an account, link a bank account to your NinjaTrader account. And then once that link has been established, you can deposit and withdraw uh, for free, uh, just with, again, with a few clicks of a mouse. Uh, so you create that link, the link is set up, you're able to deposit and withdraw. The way that we do this is through a program called Plaid. I'm not going to go through the entire setup process here, but uh, this is what it's going to look like as you start this process. And, and what you'll do is you'll actually log into your bank's online banking with your username and password for that bank. It then prompts you to select which account you'd like to link to NinjaTrader. Our treasury team will review that link. Once that's set up, again, it usually takes a couple of minutes. You're able to get in there and deposit and withdraw. There's no cost to deposit, no cost to withdraw uh, by ECH transfer. So I'll close this out here. If you want to add an account for wire transfers, uh, so, so uh, to wire withdrawal, you would click this button here. And now this is a little bit of a sneak preview of uh, what our site is going to look like in the near future. I'm on a development mode uh, version of NinjaTrader currently, though this says add bank account. You could click this. You could include all of your information for your bank account. And then that way this is in our system so that when you wanna withdraw funds from your NinjaTrader account by wire transfer, this is all saved. And again, you can take care of that with just a couple of clicks and the funds will be sent out, uh, you know, typically between one to two business days. So here's something too that uh, I feel like our, you know, uh, maybe is hiding in plain sight here, uh, but this is our transfer history. So again, I'm gonna go back and show you how to see this. So we have transfers, you have your transfer history. This is a way that you can look at all of the deposits and withdrawals you've made with your, uh, you know, between your bank and NinjaTrader. You can also see the status of them. Uh, so we can see we have pending, declined, pending this again, this is for my own personal testing. I wouldn't imagine uh, that uh, everyone else's is going to look like this. But um, again, this is a way for you to see your transfer history uh, and maybe see a status uh, of a transfer that you had requested. I do wanna uh, make one note about uh, depositing funds to NinjaTrader by wire transfer. Uh, we get those funds as soon as, uh, or we post those funds to your account as soon as they arrive. So this is a great place for you to check to see if those funds have arrived. And of course you can go to your account balance to see if that's been changed. Uh, you can see if that wire uh, hit that account. So uh, you have the same visibility as our reps and as our treasury team when it comes to inbound wire transfers right in that uh, transfer history menu. So uh, I do think, so we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, it might be tough for me to uh, cover another topic in here succinctly than 
Uh, but um, I'm happy to pause for a few moments and uh, see, uh, Mike, if you had anything you'd like to add or any questions you have of me, or did anything come through the chat? Oh, I think, you, yep. So yes, that's that's excellent, uh, Ed. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, I, I have a, a, a just a, a quick housekeeping question. Mm -hmm. um, I can download Ninja Trader, right? If I have multiple computers, say a, a laptop and a desktop, mm -hmm. uh, I'm able to download Ninja Trader on both of those, correct? And then just log in, uh, which into whichever one I need, and all my information is there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you can get that right by clicking this download button here. So let's say you're on a new computer or, you know, a different computer you can log into your account dashboard. You'll be able to click this right here. Once you log in or after you've downloaded it and installed it, once you log in with your username and password, all of your information will be saved. So your trading activity, the account plan that you're on, uh, your balance, your simulated account, your live account will all be right there. Uh, so it really is a single sign on no matter what computer you're using. And that's a nice change from how it was in the past where you'd maybe have to uh, import some things uh, and uh, get that configured. I mean, you're still gonna need to configure it to your liking in terms of the trading interface, but on the account side, it's all right there once you log in. So if I have some custom ecosystem tools, I'm gonna have to import those. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you're saying that I, I probably need to rebuild my workspaces. Um, but yeah, I think I think that makes it pretty easy. It does, and uh, you know, perhaps a topic for another time. But uh, there is a way to grab like a zip file, a backup of your Ninja Trader desktop, and load that in. Uh, so as opposed to rebuilding everything, you can kind of import it, and that can get you most of the way there. Out, outstanding. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. today. Yeah, my Ed, this was great stuff for especially if you're new to Ninja Trader to be able to navigate all this. So thank you so much for all of that. Of course. Thanks so much for having me, guys. And of course, we'll have you back. There's um, there's a million other topics that we can certainly discuss at Ninja Trader. A million and two. So, all right. All Thanks right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Um, we have a great lineup uh, for you tomorrow as well. Tom Snyder will be back at 315 with bars closing. Uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Good luck in your trading. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, everybody. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.